Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from LA. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning, guys. How we doing over there? A moment of reckoning. Yeah. This, this is judgment day. Yeah. This is judgment well, day. speaking of, yeah. here's hoping your man LeBron doesn't go Russell West brick tonight and oh. miss all of his threes. Don't do that, Skip. Don't he's do capable. That. You no, know he's no, capable. No, he's not capable. Yes, he's, not he is. Capable. he's not capable yeah. of that. You know that. Yeah, I don't know. Well, we were Russell expecting is. a bit more from Russ last night. Uh, so don't worry. I promise we will get to Tatum, his huge game. Someone over there may have predicted predicted that one over over Russ. Uh, but we actually need to talk about the Lakers right now, guys. And Shannon, uh, get ready to talk about your team. The Lakers face off against the Warriors in tonight's play-in matchup. We are used to seeing LeBron and Steph Curry lock horns late in the postseason, where Curry and LeBron faced each other in 22 NBA Finals games. And after the Lakers' final regular season game on Sunday, LeBron said, quote, for our paths to continue to cross in our careers is pretty unique and pretty cool. He also said the Warriors have quote, championship DNA. So, Shannon, what is the score tonight? Mm. Well, Skip, I think the game will be close fairly uh, early on. Um, they they got to do whatever they possibly can to neutralize Steph Curry. He is, you keep saying, the head of the snake, and everybody knows what he is. And if you look at his last 20 games, I believe the last 20 games, Steph Curry has played his best basketball of his career. And considering he's a three-time champion, considering he's a two-time MVP with the last time coming unanimous, mm -hmm. that's saying something for him to play as well as he's been playing at any point in time in his career. But I just think the Lakers' size with AD, LeBron, and Drummond will be more than what they can withstand. And by the way, I would like to subtract five cases from my 40-case total because I told you the Lakers would be 5-2 and two over the last seven. Mm. And they finished exactly 5-2. and two. So I'm going to subtract, so now mm. we're down to 35 cases. Oh, I forgot about that. No, 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 don't forget. Don't forget. You didn't forget. You try, <laughs> you try to distract me. Mm. <laughs> but anyway, Skip, I just think because the Lakers are one of the handful of teams, Skip, in the West, that still, there might be three of them mm. that play with a conventional big that doesn't shoot threes. Drummond doesn't shoot threes. DeAndre Ayton really doesn't shoot threes. And Rudy Gobert doesn't shoot threes. Mm. But the thing that they have and what they helped them last year is that they go big. They can go big and they can dominate inside. And we see Drummond. Mm -hmm. He's been a different animal since LeBron has come back. LeBron has used him a lot in the high pick and roll. Mm. He rolled to the basket, laid the ball up, offensive rebound like a demon. But it all starts with LeBron. And I expect LeBron, even though he tweaked his ankle, he rolled it in a way that he, he didn't uh, uh, injure it that mm. way. So he rolled over the top of it as, mm. a to, uh, as opposed to pronating it in. So I expect him if after two full days of rest, he on a mission, Skip. Mm. It's go I think it'll be close early. But uh, I'm taking the. I'm, I'm gonna give you the points. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you the five points that mm -hmm. Fox Bet gave the, the mm -hmm. Warriors, yeah. and I'm gonna see you, and I give you an extra five. Mm -hmm. So I got ten. Mm -hmm. I got the Lakers by at least ten. Mm -hmm. So what's the score? The Lakers, you know, Skip. They don't really get out and, and put the one twenty fives and the one thirties. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say one seventeen. I'm gonna go one seventeen to one o five. One o five. You said it was by 10. Yeah, at least by 10. I said at least by 10, yeah. You want that? You want that? <clears throat> I don't. Because, <laughs> Shannon Sharp, I have good news for you. You are in luck tonight. What you mean we in luck? Your postseason will not start until game one versus the Phoenix Suns, which is upcoming shortly. Because this marquee matchup tonight is a mismatch on the court. When we talk of the head of the snake, yes. of the Golden State Warriors, the problem is they only have a head on the snake because there's no <laughs> body to the rest of the snake. It's just a head. So the head comes in right. and it's it's trying to bite, 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 bite. Yeah. But the Lakers will subdue the head. Yeah, we got to. Because they will put three men on the head yep. and the head will be virtually useless yep. tonight. They've done it, a great it, it job will on this. Fangless. It will be without venom. The Lakers okay? have done the best job of defending him in the regular season. I'm glad you brought that up. So here's my final score. I've got your team winning at home by 20. 
I've got it 119 to 99. So obviously I want none of your sucker bet that you're offering me <laughs> because we should go the other way around. You should be betting against your team because I no. will give you, no. I'll give you 15 right now. No, I'll give no. you Lakers. No, I am going to give the Lakers. Huh? No, why would no. I do that? Well, I don't know. You always offer me bets like that. I, I don't take them, but I thought maybe you'd be no. foolish enough to take no. them. Now, to your point. What have your Lakers done to Steph Curry this year? Well, they've done simply the best job yeah. against him. And by the way, your Lakers did finish number one in defense efficiency. They can't shoot. They can't shoot threes. They can't shoot free throws. They are down at near the bottom in both yeah. categories. Yeah. But you're saying that doesn't matter. We'll see when it once last the playoffs year? really start against the Phoenix Suns. Last year we were third in defense. This year we're first. And mm -hmm. our numbers offensively were the exact the same as last year. OK, so Steph and company are only 19th in offensive efficiency. So that's that's not very good, right. actually, when you put it all together, sum it all up. They're 19th versus first in defensive efficiency. I would say that equals mismatch. Yeah, right. You see it. So let's put Steph in perspective against the Lakers. Seven times this year, he's made at least 10 threes. And mm -hmm. twice he's made, I'm sorry, four times he's made 11 threes. Mm -hmm. So he's just raining threes on everybody except the Lakers. Right. He averaged making three threes a game in the three games that he played against the Lakers. His scoring against your Lakers was 23 a game. He averaged 32 a game to win the scoring title, right? right? Yep. So he's nine points below his scoring average against your Lakers. Yeah. Uh, that's that's not very good. And then we, we look at the, the rest of his output is he's 7% in three-point shooting below his season average of 42%. He's only 35% from three against your Lakers. Mm -hmm. Again, only three a game in three games, right. nine total. So he was nine of 26. Is that good? Not, not by Steph's standards, no. right? No, it's not. So let's count the ways that your team dominated this team. Well, it started on January 18th when your team just roared out to, at one point, a 19-point lead yes. at Staples. Yep. And early in the fourth, your man LeBron made his only three of the fourth quarter to put them up 14 with 11 minutes left. Up 14 at yep. home? Yep. LeBron, you got to close that yep. one. Uh -huh. He did not close that yeah, one. Yeah, we spit the bid on that one. Uh, you spit the bid on that because you got outscored 32 to 16 the rest of the way. That's shocking. And LeBron, the rest of the way, was a minus 13, which was the worst on the floor in the fourth quarter. Yep. And the rest of the way, LeBron went 0 for 4 from the field and 0 for 3 from 3 and scored a grand total of two points with three turnovers. But in the end, LeBron still had the ball in his hands and a chance to wipe it all away and, and cancel out all the negativity. And could we see what happened? Here's LeBron. At the end, he's up and he's... A little long, a little long. A little long and a little wide right. LeBron, well, as I often say, no clutch, Gene. There's another indication. Yet another indication. Oh, Skip, don't do that, Skip. Okay. Uh, for the record, Steph had just missed a three. Pretty wide. It was a good look that he had at the other end. Mm -hmm. That would have put them up. It would have iced the game, put right. them up four. So again, they both all the the two big guns on the floor both missed threes at the end of the game. But Golden State hangs on one fifteen to one thirteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then we come to Staples again on February 28th, and there's no AD for this game. So I'm, I'm giving LeBron high marks for this one because it is a runaway of a route. Yeah. It's 117 to 91. <laughs> what happened to Steph? The guy that LeBron says is MVP, well, well, he wasn't very good in that game. He scored 16 points in that game? Really? Yeah. Okay, so and 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 LeBron is campaigning for him to be Skip, the MVP. Skip that one game. Oh, okay. you can't you can't say it because the man, everybody, every mm. player that's been as an MVP candidate has had a bad game, has had a bad two games. Mm. So you can't say because the man had one bad game, he's not deserving. Now I don't believe he should win the MVP, but he's had an unbelievable season, and LeBron knows what he's capable of of doing. Mm. He, LeBron, look, like I said. We, it used to be because LeBron was in the East. Basically, the only time he could ever see Steph was in Steph's, mm -hmm. Steph mm -hmm. was in the NBA Finals. Yep. Now they're in the same the same conference, yep. so they're gonna bump heads three, four times a year, maybe even more. Skip in the playoffs. Mm. So 
LeBron knows what Steph represents. Steph knows what LeBron represents. And it's funny that at this stage of their career, I mean, can you imagine if Bird and Magic were mm -hmm. in the same conference? Or Jordan and Magic, you know, were in the same conference for an extended period. Of, because, you know, for the next two or three years, they're going to be in the same conference, we believe. Okay. Unless they'll come on down to Staples. <sighs> so <laughs> then we get to the rubber match, the third game, which happened to be at Golden State. Yeah. On March 15th. And there's no AD again. Right. And guess what? LeBron and company, they just, just we did a number bum one. rush them right yeah, out of the. Number. It yeah. was 128 to 97. So look at these last two scores 117 to 91, 128 to 97. You said, well, we don't score 125. Well, you, you averaged about 125 in those last two games. But that was before, that was before Steph said, man, I've been out here bull jabbing. Man, let me, because y'all, y'all, y'all talking slanderous about my name. Mm. Y'all talking about Steph's not here, and y'all yeah. talking about KD not here, and y'all talking about I can't do anything. So let me show you what I can really do. Let me show mm. you what Stephen Wardell Curry mm. can do. Mm. And he did a number on folks, and he's the scoring champ, and he's going to be first team all NBA, and he's going to probably be top five in the MVP vote. But against you guys, three times he played more like Wardell, right? <laughs> well, did he not? <laughs> He, yeah, that's a I, dad, dad. I dad, know, dad. But, but, but it looked like I, I couldn't recognize him, so I'm going to call him Wardell in those three games. But, hey, he's a different animal now, Skip. You know he's playing with confidence. I'm expecting to see this. Steph Curry that we've seen over the last month. Mm -hmm. Do you expect to see that that Steph Curry? I do not, because here's what Steve Kerr had to say yesterday. He said, we anticipate they're going to throw the kitchen sink at yeah. Steph, and you better believe they yeah. will. Multiple defenders said Steve Kerr, different matchups, some blitzes, some kind of shadowing, that type of stuff. Yes. Okay, so you have five or six defenders, including LeBron, who can go bother Steph right. a little to a lot. Mm -hmm. KCP can go right at him right. right away. Caruso can give him problems. You can bring in THT to give him problems. Shoot, probably shooter will start. I, I think shooter a shooter probably start, might start on him. Again, he's, he's slightly slightly shorter right. than Steph, but still. Wh but he's whatever. quick as he can get up, he get can up, get up yeah, in him. Okay. him a little bit. But, but the point is... He will get doubled every time. Yeah, he should. The, the primary goal of the Lakers tonight will, will be make Steph give up the basketball yep. as soon as he crosses half court. Yeah, absolutely. Because as Shooter said yesterday, one dribble past half court, he's in range. He's in range. And, yep. and we yep. got it. Yes. We, we know that. And that yeah. is true. Yes. That is a true yes. statement. Yes. He has revolutionized yes. the art of shooting yes. the basketball from long range. There, is no, there are no more bad shots, Skip. You remember what they used okay. to be. Man, that's a why would you shoot? That's a terrible shot. Okay. Not anymore. Okay, so Steve Kerr goes on to say, we've kind of seen everything. Steph has seen everything. And he says the key is Draymond. He has the answer with all that screening and dribble handoffs yes. and that sort of thing. So they're fun to watch together. And I will give Draymond high marks for this. He does know how to free Steph. Mm -hmm. Using his body, turning into two defenders right. and trying to knock both of them off Steph as he hands off to Steph. And a lot of times, Skip, what he's done, he's faking, faked the handoff and dribbled and laid it up or dumped okay. the basketball. So he's got very proficient because everybody, both guys get so conscious of Steph shooting that screen three-point shot that Draymond has set for him. Draymond's like, oh, y'all want to go to Steph? Okay, I'll just go on down here and lay the ball up or I dunk it. Mm. So they're going to be cautious of that. There is no more, uh, 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 you know, Skip. Hedging, you got to blitz him. Mm. The bigs, AD, because if you remember, Skip, Steph put him up three because he danced on AD. AD was like worried about him going back, and he's darted and Steph back and hit a three, put him up five. So now they're going to probably try to put uh, Drum in the pick and roll, knowing that Drum really does not want to get out too far mm. and have them go by him. So look, we're going to trap the, trap him. I'm telling you what we're going to do. We're going to trap him. We're going to blitz him. Mm -hmm. We're going to get him out of, get the ball out of his hand. Yep. And we're going to see if the other guys, the Baysmores, the Draymond, the Toscano Andersons, if they can beat you. If they, they can. can't, if they, if Jordan Poole, if they can, Andrew Wiggins, okay, we lost. They can't. We'll we, we get ready for the Grizzlies of uh, San Antonio. But Steph Curry is not about to go haywire. Mm. The one time they beat you, they came into that game early in the year at 6-6, six and six, having lost uh, two straight in three of their last five. Right. So they weren't much. You didn't take them seriously. Right. You had them down 19 in the first game, right. and you wiped them out in the next two. What mm -hmm. would that tell you about tonight? Wipe out. Well, we're the better team. There's no question about in that in my mind that we're the better team. But, Skip, for one game, you know one game. You've mm. seen it in football. The better team doesn't always win. And this is one game. This is a game seven.
It's not do or die, though, because if you don't win this one, then you get to probably. No, nah, we doesn't do or die because I don't want to hear your mouth tomorrow. OK, but y y then you probably get Memphis at home. No, nah, we won't. We, we get nobody at home. Hmm? We going on the road. We are, when we when will we play uh, the sun Sunday, mm -hmm. Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm saying you, you have no, a, you're no. working with a net no, here. No, you've got a net. No, we're the Walenders. Huh? We don't do the net. You we don't, don't do? walk across the gang. Can we go walk across Niagara Falls or the tight road with no net? Well, there's no pressure at all. Like, you're, you're fine. You, you're way better than this team, except for one player. You can take him out of the game. Right. And if by chance he goes crazy hot and, and goes into some twilight zone making threes and he makes. Oh, he can win the game by himself then. Okay. Well, he, he's capable of yeah. it. You, you will not allow it. <laughs> yeah. But if he did, again, my Spurs play Memphis tonight at Memphis. I don't think they can win that game. So we, you'd get Memphis. Can you beat Memphis skip. in a do or die game? Skip. I don't yes. have a fault. Skip. I didn't play. I didn't have. When I went to college, I didn't have a plan B. A had to work. There was no plan B. There was no C. It was A, Savannah State, NFL. That was my only plan. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Kid, that, that's not a smart way to do things, but I had no fallback plan. Mm. The Lakers have no fallback plan. The fallback plan is beat Golden State, mm. get ready for the Suns. Mm. That's the plan. Mm. Speaking of plans, your coach, Vogues, as you call him. Yeah, defensive guru. He said that LeBron was full speed in practice, full go in practice, so the ankle is now 100%. No, it's not, it's not. I'm not going to give you your 85% anymore because that means you get a 15% no. excuse. There are no more excuses. Yeah. You just said there's no plan B, so there's no excuse no, no, tonight. We, we, I'm not making no excuses. If they don't win, Golden State played better. There's no excuses. We don't make excuses. Is LeBron, LeBron is where he is. Everybody has a little nick. Some people are more nick than others. Mm. But I do not believe LeBron is 100%. There's no way he's going to go from what I saw Sunday to totally pre-injury. That's he was not happening. dominating Sunday. And, and you, you said it was me, skeletons. Huh? You said it was, it was skeletons. skeletons. Okay, he was so, dominating. So it was matter. like open noon, noon time at the Y. Yeah, exactly. So that yeah. don't count. That he's don't doing count. a 360 spin on, on Alexander Walker. And he came down on his foot. He did not. I he think did. he was just, he, he's like, ooh, I got to build back in some little Man, excuse. You, I, I didn't see him step on any foot at all. You actually think. I, I did see him limp to the bench, but Vogue said 100% yesterday. He full said go. he was a full participant. Yeah, that's 100%. <laughs> As the Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp always tells me, you step on the floor, you're 100%. No, no, that, that was it. I said the people expect you once you're on the field or the court or yep. the diamond, whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. That's they it. expect I expect you to be 100%. Okay, I expect 100%, and I don't want, if this is a close game late, I don't want to see LeBron limping around. I don't want to see he it. He might be limping before. No. Mm -mm. So we're going we're gonna to pick and choose our spots. I mean, you saw it, Skip. You saw there are spots that LeBron, like, man, that burst was there. And then you saw other times, like, it's, it's still not where he needs it to be. Mm. But let's just hope as the playoff progress, he mm. can gradually build, have no set, have, have no setbacks, mm. and I like I like our chances. Mm. As a matter of fact, I love our chances. Kent Bazemore, Kavani Looney. What are they gonna do with me? Toscano Anderson? Yeah. Seriously? They're in the NBA, aren't they? I'm laughing. I'm laughing. This is gonna be a 20-point blowout. Wanna bet? Hey, but you, Skip, you saw what Jordan Poole did the other day. He dropped 30. A couple of games ago, uh, Andrew Wiggins dropped 38. They're capable. They have guys that are capable. They can get hot, and they can make – Skip, you know the three-point shot is the neutralizer. Yeah. There are a lot of teams that before you fall behind. These teams now, you get, by, you get ahead by 18, 19 points. That ain't nothing. Because with the three-point shot, you're never really out of a ball game mm. unless you're down by 25 with, with two or three minutes to go. But if, if you're down by 20 points in the first half with the three-point shot, that's nothing. Mm. Guy make two or three of those, you turn the ball over, they right back in the ball mm. game. So here's my final problem with Golden State. What? If, if they had some serious hatred of the Lakers, if there was some serious, real, authentic, bad blood going on here, then I'd say, okay, I give them a shot because they might come in with fire in their eyes in a one-game scenario. <laughs> but guess what? After Draymond called LeBron the B-word in game five of that 20, what was it, 16 finals, he, he became his business partner in the offseason because LeBron is greatest at keep friends close no. and enemies closer. Skip.
maybe if it was Cleveland. Mm. But you have to understand, these teams do not have a playoff history. Mm. This is not the Celtics Lakers. This is not Detroit Chicago. This is not Detroit Lakers. So there is no built-in hatred because they, I don't even know if they've ever seen each other in the playoffs. I it's believe been, that LeBron legitimately resented that Steph won those back-to-back -back MVPs. But somehow that all went away because now they're in the same conference. And, and now LeBron is campaigning for Steph to finish his career as a Laker well, in Steph, L.A. Look, I, look that, that's not new. There have been times, hell, I've missed out going to the Pro Bowl that I know for a certain fact that I had the second most catches, yards, and touchdowns, and my team went to the playoffs, and I didn't go. So, mm. yes, I was disappointed mm. because I knew I had a better season than some of the guys that went in front of me. Mm. So for LeBron to, not, to be upset, said that like, man, I think I, I deserve to win that award. Mm. But that doesn't mean that you don't think he's, I just know what I put, the work that I put in. Mm. And I believe I should have been compensated. Mm. So now. All I know is LeBron James is campaigning for Steph to be the MVP of this year's NBA. And I'm like, what? Just trying to butter him up. It, and it, it works. It, did it not, works. It did not work. Steph yeah. will come in like they'll hug each other before tip off. Maybe they'll kiss each other on the cheek like Magic no, and Isaiah. Exactly. Used to do. And, and then guess yeah. what? I, and Magic knocked Isaiah right out the sky. Mm. That had nothing to do. Yeah, we're going to shake hands, but guess what? Now it's time to, it's about advancing the playoffs. So yeah. if I catch you up in the air, yeah. I'm going to snatch your butt Draymond out. said yesterday, yeah, we're friends, but it's it's fun to go destroy your friends on the court. Baloney. It is, Skip. Baloney. It, it ain't nothing Not like beating friends. It ain't nothing Wipe like, out. Skip, Mismatch. There's, Skip, there's nothing like beating friends. I don't know. You don't play spades. But when you play spades with friends and you talking, oh, how many you thought you were going to get? Mm. Oh, mm. no, no, no. And guess what this is? Dr. T, I like to do this, Skip. I, mm. put that, put that, I said, that's your set book right there. Mm. How many minutes you say you were going to get, that's going to stop mm. you from getting it. All I know is I demolish Ernestine at Jeopardy every Friday <laughs> nah, nah, nah. night. That's yeah. all I do. Can you blur and I revel in it. <laughs> I glow. No mercy. Well, how about that? The uh, Celtics did beat the Wizards last night, 118 to 100, earning a spot in the playoffs against the second-seeded Nets while sending Washington into an elimination game on Thursday against Indiana. Jason Tatum scored 50 points, including 23 and eight decisive third quarter, while Russell Westbrook had one rebound and zero assists in the second half and appeared to head to the locker room early. So, Shannon, was this game more about Jason Tatum or Russell Westbrook? Uh, it was Tatum. And Skip, I said the only chances that they have because I yeah. thought the force of nature that Russ was and the way the tear that he'd been on, that he was going to find a way to wield this team to victory. I thought he'd have something like 20 points. Now, we knew he wasn't going to be efficient, but we thought he would be effective. And that's, 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 that's Russ in a nutshell, Skip. Never efficient. Always effective, though, normally because the triple doubles, he's played well. He's, he's thrusted his name into the MVP conversation. If that's what we're doing, anybody that makes the, you know, in the eight seed, Skip, you can get a play, you can, you know, you be an MVP contender. Why not throw Russ at that 22, 11, and 11? I think he should be in the discussion. But Jason Tatum was just too much, Skip. He made a mess of him last night. And in that decisive third quarter, because the Wizards, the first half was right there. I thought they could have. Maybe put some distance, but they got a little careless. Got a little, you know, turnover, turn over, turn the ball over. And Skip, but this is Russ. Russ would come down sometimes. It's a one on three. Instead of pulling it out, he goes, throws it up off the glass, gets a charge. You know, shoots air balls, bricks it, and, and so that, that's that's who he is. But you have to live with that because you know you're going to get more good than bad, but mm -hmm. you're going to get some bad. Yep. You just hope it's not a whole lot of bad. Yep. But Jason Tatum was phenomenal. And to show you, Skip, he played he played 20 of the 24 minutes in the second half. He got it going in the third quarter, and he just couldn't miss. They they threw everything at him. They tried that Bradley Beal. Uh, well, uh-uh. Hachimura got in mm -hmm. foul trouble. That really hurt him there because now everybody else that guards him, Skip, are undersized. They're not big enough. And, Skip, he shoots that ball at such a high angle. You're not blocking it. You're going to foul him, in which, you know, Bradley Beal did. And then Bradley was, you know, trying to uh, uh, drag that leg around. So when you look at it, Skip, Bradley Beal was 10 or 25. Russ was 6 of 18. And Jenny mentioned what Russ did in the second half. And that, that doomed him. So Russ not playing particularly well. And then Jason Tatum having a historic by a Boston Celtics, and we know what the Celtics represent. He got a 50-piece and made, just made a mess of the Wizards. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, look, Russ was Russ. But I think I'm going to make this all about Jason Tatum because for this young man, he was phenomenal. 
But don't count on Kimball Walker because I don't believe even with that 50 piece that he gave him, if Kimball Walker doesn't do what he did, I don't think they win this game. We had a Kimba siding skip. Yep. He was electric yesterday. Their starter scored 98 of their 118. What they have, 118? Mm -hmm. And basically put two guys scored like 79 they did. Of, 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 of the 118. But they were special. And Jason Tatum, take a bow, bro. He mm -hmm. earned that. That was a special performance yesterday, Skip. Mm -hmm. That was special. I will buy that it was special, and I've never been the biggest Jason Tatum fan, and he talked last night about his many critics and how he tries to ignore them, and he has certainly risen, and he has shown mm -hmm. in the absence of Jalen Brown. Right. <sighs> That's in scoring the basketball, because he had the 60 against Sacramento in a game they won by three on April 30th. Right. But coming into this game, without Jalen Brown, they had lost five of six. They had lost six of eight. And even you thought, when we closed the show yesterday, that Washington would win this game. Yes. Correct? Yes. I mean, I, I threw out the 50 piece, but I'm like, he's not finna get no, I mean, you know, he ain't been finna go no 50 in a playoff game. No. <laughs> Nor did I think that. Well, he, he got 23 in the third quarter. It, that's all you need to yes. know. Well, that's, that's all. He almost got half of it in one quarter. Skip, he had 23 of their 38 points. Okay. So what did I see last night? I saw Washington do what I thought Washington would do. Late in the first half, with a minute and 40 left, they were up eight points. Right. Marcus Smart had hurt himself, and, and he was trying to, he was dragging his leg around, trying mm -hmm. to come back in. And as we know, later in the game, Robert Williams got hurt, and, and he's out of the game. So, so they are beat up, and they're beaten up psychologically and mentally, and it just looked like the Celtics were literally on their last legs at this point. Yes, I agree. But down the stretch of the second quarter, Jason Tatum was the main one who stepped up and said, no, not in our house. And they cut the lead down to only two at halftime. Right. But I'm still thinking the Wizards are in perfect position to close this deal yep. and to be the seventh seed. Right. And what happened in the third quarter? Well... When it came to the Wizards, nothing happened. Nothing. They, they, they because were all of a sudden, they had held Boston to 27 in the first quarter, 25 in the second quarter, and they allow 38 because, as we just pointed out, Jason Tatum goes off for 23 mm -hmm. just in the third quarter alone. And guess who went missing? My man, Russell Westbrook. Right on schedule, in a crucial playoff game, he turned back into Russell Westbrook. Yeah. Because he can brick them like nobody can brick them. And I've always said... If only he could shoot, because if he could shoot, Duh. what would you have? You, 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 you'd have Jordan-esque, I mean, he would have a 40-point triple-double. <laughs> he, he would be, because he can't shoot a lick. This year from three, he was 31.5%. That, that ranked 150th of 156 qualified. Think about that. He's in the MVP conversation, and I don't disagree with you. He at right. least deserved a mention in right. the MVP. Right. It was debatable because, once again, what was that? That was the fourth time in five years he averaged a triple-double. Right. And down the stretch, the last 20-odd games, he was just it was, extraordinary. He was spectacular. He, he was. He's just Like, it's impossible to do at mm -hmm. six feet three what, what he was doing. Right. And by the way, in the first half last night, he had 13 rebounds. How many 6'3 guards can get 13 in the first half right. of a playoff game? Five offensive. <sighs> what? You're <laughs> kidding. And then guess what happened in the second half? He disappeared. He got one. He got one rebound after he got 13 in the first half. He got one. Guess how many assists he had in this, the whole second half? How about a big goose egg? Right. How do you do that? Well, that was the most surprising stat, Skip. He only had five assists. <sighs> And I know they were three of 21 from three, so maybe it's he's passing the ball to shooters, and guys were Bertans, and, and those kind of guys. Bertans were awful He was just night. awful, and they're just missing three, so it hurts his assist total. But to have zero in the second half, you're kidding me. And still, I thought they were hanging in, and I thought they were going to make a run. And by the way, Bradley Beal, is, as he called himself after the game, I'm the one-leg bandit because he said he wore four compression sleeves on his hamstring, mm -hmm. four, all on top right. of each other. right. Because it's not very good. No. And, and he didn't look himself. No. Uh, he, he did the best he could. In fact, his little scoring surges sort of kept them in the right. game. So there was a 
pivotal moment with uh, just under 10 minutes left in the game. And I think, okay, here they come. And if we could see what Wes Brick did at this point, this just took the heart out of the team. He goes off elbow jumper here, pretty wide open look, and he hits nothing but backboard. How do you do that? The backside of the backboard, yeah, Skip. That is what I'm saying. I mean, I mean, he's so long. That, oh, that's, the that's a bad air ball where, yeah. where it's completely over. It's like a foot over the rim right. and hits nothing but plexiglass. Right. Okay. Well, it, when when your star does that, not the Brad, I'm not taking anything away from Bradley Beal, right. but the, the the driving force has yeah. been Russell. And when Russell misses a shot that badly, it just sort of takes the heart out of you. And from that moment forward, that was the end of the Wizards as we knew and loved them. Right. Obviously, they do have a safety net because they're going to go home and they're going to be some, somewhere around three, three and a half point favorite right. over Indiana, who shocked me last night by just un- wiping out Charlotte after they lost Karis LeVert right. to COVID. Right. Well, Brogdon came back, and then we're going to talk about this game, and, and Sabonis was, oh, was a monster he considering a monster. that he started off. But, Skip, this, and what, if we knew this. Bradley Beal and Russell Westbrook was going to have to probably get like 60 to 70 between the two. Because really, when you look at it, Skip, who else can really score? And if Russ can't assist the basketball, which means if they're not making shots, now all of a sudden, and then you let Bradley, and now you let Jason Tatum go off. Skip, I said, look, the only way the Celtics could win, Jason Tatum gets a 50-piece. Mm-hmm. Skip, I didn't think nowhere in hell he was going to get a 50-piece. I, I, hey. No, and then Kimba Walker, they've been talking, okay, well, Kimba, Kimba, Kimba. Mm. Kimba was an all-star at one yep. last, last year, Skip. And he finally had a, so that knee must be getting wet. Now, you're like, well, yeah, yeah, we won. Oh, we get Brooklyn Nets as a consolation prize. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that, those are the problems that you want to skip. But Jason Tatum, Skip, he's okay. what, he's, he's what okay. they thought he would be. Okay, got it. Back to Russell Westbrook. So you play, so it's more so you say it's okay. more Russ than Jason Tatum. I know Russell Westbrook's game, and he wasn't playing it in the second half. Something happened at halftime, and I don't know, I have no idea what it was. Either he got mad at a coach, he got mad at a teammate, I don't know. But he disengaged in the third quarter because for Russell Westbrook to come up with one rebound over two full quarters of play mm-hmm. with the game on the line is just wrong. He does it, as you know, with heart, desire, guts, will. He just wills himself to rebound the basketball. Well, Skip, he kept shooting. He was 6'18". He he didn't stop doing that. Okay, but no assist and one rebound says, I disengaged. And he was gone. He was sub for with 345 left in the game. Like he tweaked his knee or something, Skip. I I don't know. He said after the game, I got various nicks and bruises, but nothing serious. I I don't know. But they showed him on TNT leaving. Yeah, but I thought thought there was a play, Skip, but he got got nicked. I thought he had tweaked his knee. Is he limping? I don't know. Maybe a little bit. Maybe favoring one side a little bit. I don't know. But something went wrong. So now what is happening well, he didn't do anything to help his long-earned reputation of being the all-time great stat machine, the greatest stat machine, yes. but, but a player who favors starring over winning. Mm-hmm. Like, it's all about him, and it's all about his numbers, but it's not about the W or the L. Right. What did he do the, the other night at Atlanta when he broke Oscar's all-time he, he triple grabbed double? The ball. He, he, he missed the last second shot and immediately wheeled and said, I need the basketball. Right. It didn't bother him a bit. You have said many times on the show, it, he does not lose any slay, sleep over winning and losing basketball does. games, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure he left, uh, lost much sleep over losing this game. I, I think the thing, is, Skip, is that all that, the great players, if you're great, can you be great in moments like this? This is the time that we need, Skip, this is the time we need one of those historic triple-doubles. Mm-hmm. This is the time we need a 20-20-20 ball game. In games like this, games that matter. I'm not saying what he's doing isn't impressive, because it is. I think, But I think because so many other, because we just talked about Sabonis, Skip, and we don't think of Sabonis as a historic great. And the dude got 19-21-9, and he didn't play the fourth quarter. Yeah. So he, he didn't shoot it very well, he but he played his tail right. off. Yeah. So, so we, we, we're seeing yeah. kind of like the no-hitter, Skip. Now, all of a sudden, the no-hitter's about to lose his luster, because they got five of them before. Before June. Mm-hmm. So, but we need Russ 
to do what he does in the regular season, Skip, we need that in the playoffs. And then I think even though if he doesn't win, some of the criticism would, sus would, would subside. Yep. So that's the thing, Skip. We see these historic triple-doubles. Russ had a 30-20-20 game. We've seen him have 20-20-20 games. In the last night, Skip, what did he give us? He gave us 18 14 and 5 mm. on 6 of 18. Now, we know he's not efficient. So we expect to shoot somewhere in the low 40s, maybe even high 30s from the field. So I'm, I'm going to disregard that because, like you said, he's not a great shooter from three or from the field unless he's getting to getting into the lane, laying the ball up. So we know he's not a great shooter. But this was the night that we needed Russ when people look back and like, man, that joke was 6-3 and had 30, 20, and 20. That's what we needed. And I think if he were to give us some of those performances in a playoff series, like he does in the regular season, Skip, because like down the stretch, what do he have? 21, 22 of his last 30, he had triple doubles. He did. And then last night, he he, he does this. He's a career 30.5% three-point shooter. That is all-time abysmally bad. But what makes Russell Westbrook great is his mind is that he believes he I'm does. going. I'm going. I, I so, can will this team. Yeah. Yes. So he believes, Skip, if he misses 10, mm -hmm. he believes the next five that he shoots from three going to go in. Yep. They're probably not, but that's not going to stop him from shooting them. And by the way, speaking of shooting, the most impressive thing about the 50-piece for Jason Tatum, 17 of 17 from the free throw yep. line. And I wondered if your man LeBron was watching. I don't know. But I knew early on, I was like, he also aggressive. I mean, he had like nine shots in the first six minutes of the ball game. Mm. I like, he, oh, he going for something special here. And then all of a sudden, he caught fire. So I was right. I should get like a couple of cases because I predicted this 50 piece. You did not. You picked Washington. But yesterday. I predicted the 50 you, you, piece you, for Jason. You can't revise history. Did well, I not I, say 50 I, piece? Who, yes, who did you pick to win the game? Exactly. I picked. It's Russ. all about yes, W's and L's. Your restaurant was open last <laughs> night only for losers, so you got to eat your well, own food. I didn't, you didn't tell me Russ was not going to do what Russ normally uh, does. Well, that's for you to predict. <laughs> yeah, well, we all should have maybe seen that one coming. Oh, okay, you guys all fell for it. Either way, well done on the 50, Shannon. I'll give you that, at least. We need to talk about Ty Lue here. He responded to speculation that the Clippers tanked down the stretch by resting Kawhi and Paul George in their final games in hopes of avoiding an early crosstown playoff matchup with LeBron and the Lakers. He said, quote, I don't give a damn what anybody else thinks. At the end of the day, I am the coach of the team. We decided to go with health over anything else. We finally got our team healthy, and that's what we focused on. Wow, lots wow. there. Shannon, any truth to what he's saying? No, I ain't got no problem with you, look. Mm. T. Lou say, I don't care what y'all say. That's what he should. We're going to block the noise out. We're going to do what's in the best interest. Mm. But there's five days off between between they, when they was going to play the uh, last the regular season and the playoff game. So five mm. days. Mm. So you needed an extra two days. Mm. Come on, T. Lou. It is what it is. Mm. You're right. You're the head coach. You do what's in the best interest. But we know what you did. Mm. One of two things. You didn't want to see Portland or you didn't want to see the Lakers. Because if you look at, you're the number two seed at one point in time, Skip, and you see what happened, they lost, how many games they lose in their last 10? Mm. How can I look the last 20? Man, stop this. I ain't got no problem with it. You want to do, you do what you do. Like you said, you're the head coach. You do what you believe in the best interest of your team. But we saw what you did. Mm. Now, I just read the report. Some executives, NBA executives, was looking around like, hold on. I don't know what the hell they were running mm. the last couple of games. I, I don't know what that was. Mm. I do. <laughs> he ain't want to see them boys. Mm -hmm. Everybody talking. Everybody want to talk. Everybody, you know, I want to fight Mike Tyson. Give me Iron right, Mike. Mm. And then 90 seconds into the match, into the, uh, the first round, they up out of there. Mm. Everybody would want to talk about what they want to do until it's time to actually do it. Mm. And then somebody, I want somebody else to take knock the Lakers off. Mm. No, you do it. You did all that chirping. Mm. Oh, well, we, we, wait, Kawhi and I going to do this and Kawhi and I going to do that and the 2 1 3. Mm. Do all that chirping. Really? But at some point in time, Skip, you got to pull that thing up and then, let's go. Uh. Ty Lu, you're right. This is your ball club. Mm -hmm. You do coach as you see fit. But we know. Mm. We know what you did. Mm. All I can say is go, Ty, go. I loved what he said because he stuck it right back in your face and all the critics' faces, all the Laker Nation faces, who actually believed that they were trying to duck and dodge the Lakers. They were. Or, or Trailblazers. They wanted, they wanted the Mavs. You know it. You know it. 
They wanted the Lakers in the first round. They are so vulnerable right now because La Ankle is still limpy gimpy. Uh-oh. You know it, and Uh-oh. I know. It. But you just said he was hundred percent. No, well, he's he a full participant, so he's in my book. He's hundred percent. I don't want to hear anything about it. But if you're going to get them, they have had very few reps together. He and Big Penguin. So. Now is the time. Obviously, the deeper they get into the playoffs, if in fact they survive to go deep into the playoffs, I'm not sure they're going to get by Phoenix, but we'll see how that works. The point is they get an easy draw tonight against Steph, and then the playoffs start. But again, if if they go deep in the playoffs and get to the conference finals and face the Clippers in the conference finals, then they're going to be tougher because Mm -hmm. they're going to be better. They're going to have more reps together. They're probably going to get a little healthier and a little more cohesive at that point. And so obviously you're not trying to duck and dodge the Lakers. And you know what what I'm trying to do then? Hmm? It's exactly what he said. And by the way, the other quote was from Ty Lue yesterday. If you look at our Cleveland days, I think he was coaching this guy named James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. None of our starters played the last two games of the season, said Ty Lu, the former Cavaliers coach. He says, we took health, and that is the most important thing to me. Right now, presiding over the Clippers as their advisor, their overseer, is the great Jerry West, who once had the foresight to draft Kobe Bryant, or at least trade in trade the first round. Good. Yep. And Jerry West is nobody's fool. Lawrence Frank is nobody's fool. And certainly Ty Lue is nobody's fool. They knew exactly what they were doing. They wanted health. They will take health over rust any day. They don't care who they're going to play. It doesn't matter what seed they are. They can be the mustard seed because the tree is going to grow. Hold on. So you said Ty Lue said, so Ty Lue said to go back check his Cleveland days. Mm-hmm. It's funny that you said that, Ty Lue, because that's what I did. Mm-hmm. In 2016, Ty Lue stayed, played his starters the second to the last game of the season in order to clinch the number one seed, then sat once they clinched it. Oh. In 2018, the starters played every game down the stretch, but was only the first quarter of the final game because it was meaningless because they had the four seed. Uh-huh. I'm glad you mentioned that, Ty Lue. Uh-huh. I'm glad you say go back and check your Cleveland days because yep. that's exactly what I did because I had a feeling you might do that. Mm. So, let me, so let me get this right. So uh, Paul George and Kawhi weren't healthy. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George have played six straight games since he returned from his foot injury. Paul George, Kawhi did. Paul George had played nine straight games. Mm. So they weren't healthy. Nope, they're you, not. Oh! But LeBron James been out for eight weeks. He's healthy. You mm-hmm. see what you did there? Mm-hmm. I knew you was gonna do that. Mm-hmm. Ty Lue, you right. You the coach. But don't you try to fool us. Don't you don't you try to do that. Mm. Don't you feed me mustard greens and tell me call, they not get collars. Mm. I know the difference between mm-hmm. my greens. You and do. those are mustard greens you feed me, mm-hmm. not collards. I'm going to quote the great William Shakespeare by saying, you doth protest too much because all this protestation from you, all all this cynicism, all this skepticism means that you are afraid of the Clippers. That's what it means. No, 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 skip, no, skip. Mm. I play my, I, I mean, I have to stay up and watch league pass. I mm. got to stay up and watch these game. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm, let me see what Kawhi and PG and uh, Pat Bam, you know, Pat Bam, the third most important player. Let me see what they're going to get. And then I see the line, uh, DMP, mm. DMP, mm. coach's decision, coach's decision. Yep. What? I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. Mm. I got a stamp. I paid for this. The NBA should re- have, re- have to reimburse me some of my money because mm. I did not pay to see no Terrence Mann and some guys I'd never heard of when you got two healthy guys. Because, Skip, you know what this is all about. Mm-hmm. You remember that movie? I know what you did last summer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know what you did last summer. Mm. You know what they did too. Nothing. Mm. They laid a day. Mm. And that's what's hanging over. And they want to get that nasty taste out of their mouth. And they want to start with an easy one. They wanted to start with the Mavericks. They weren't trying to see Portland and Dame and CJ. Mm. And they definitely didn't want to see them big guns out in L.A. Mm. You know that. I know that. And I don't care what Ty Lue say. And I like Ty Lue. Ty Lue, good people. Yeah. But you know what he did. Mm. Everybody knows what mm. they did. Who was the coach last summer in the bubble? Was it Ty Lue? Help me out. He was on the bench. No. He was on the bench. He wasn't the head coach. He was on the bench. Was he the head coach? He was on the bench. No, sorry. I'm happy for Doc Rivers. He's in the right place at the right time. Right. And they are, they're going to be yeah, the two guys, I'm glad you said yeah. that because them two guys right there, they quit on Doc. Mm. They quit on Doc and got him mm. up out of there. Okay. They didn't speak on Doc's behalf. 
Who was the unsung MVP of the Los Angeles Lakers in the bubble? It was playoff Rondo. You would not have won without playoff Rondo, and he chose to be a clipper. They they just they finagled it beautifully where he got his money and went to Atlanta for half a year, and he knew exactly what was coming. They would trade Sweet Lou, Lemon Pepper Lou, straight up to get Rondo right back to the Clippers where he belongs. That's okay. I now have a quarterback. I now have a leader who will get in their faces and say, no, not tonight. But you are receivers not too good. Yeah. You had the best quarterback in the nation. Yeah. Hey, Tom Brady had quarterbacks in New England. Yeah. I mean, he had receivers this last year in New England. How they look. Uh. He went down to Tampa and got a Super Bowl with better receivers. I've got the deepest team in the NBA. I got a three-headed monster in the post. I've got Big Zoo. I've got Surge back and, and strong. And I got DeMarcus Cousins looking like Boogie again. What happened? You're, what you're in can... big trouble. No, I'm you're not in trouble. I ain't worried, I ain't worried about nothing. Trouble. You keep on talking about, oh, I got the deepest bench. Ain't nobody caring about how deep the ocean is. Skip, if you mm. ain't got no beautiful fish and mm. no coral in it, yeah. y'all got nothing. When you see, we uh, huh. keep on Speaking keep that energy. Nothing. Keep that energy. Who led the league in three point shooting? Help me out. It was a record setting year for three point shooting, but who led the league? It wasn't you guys, because you guys were abysmal. Well, I about. think you ranked 28th in the Hold league. Hold on, let me, let, so let me, I just want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. Clippers led the league in three-point shooting. Led the league in three-point shooting. And led the league in free-throw shooting. Thank you. And you only finished fourth? Mm. What kind of ball job mm. is this? We are completely whole and completely healthy, and rust be damned. Do, don't care about rust, care about Health. That, that's good. What you so? In other words, you telling me you led the league in passing, passing touchdowns, and completion percentage, mm -hmm. but you had the 17th best offense in football. Mm. Something not computing. Oh, yeah. Now I ain't had no good computer in my head, mm. but something ain't computing right now, Skip. Mm. We can make threes and free throws, and we can make them in clutch time as opposed to oh, your guys. You, Skip, you know y'all one of the worst clutch teams in basketball. No. Yes, you are. You yes, you are. Watch, no, watch what happens look, with Rondo. I don't need to watch. I yeah. watched the regular season, mm -hmm. and, and, and the numbers say you're one of the worst clutch teams mm -hmm. in basketball. Mm -hmm. Even though you make great, you have a high percentage from three. You shoot great from the free throw line. But when the rubber needs to meet the road, <laughs> we put yep. that pressure on you. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. We apply pressure. Mm -hmm. We don't get, you know, something. They say gently apply pressure. That ain't what we do. Mm. We come up with that oh, geez, uh, anaconda trope. Who coached LeBron James to his most unlikely championship? Uh, it was T. Lou. Oh, well, Skip, you know that's what we do. Ooh. If you want to be the first, your first championship comes see us. Yeah. Eric Spolstra, mm. always beholden to us. Mm. T. Lou, beholden to us. Frankie V, mm. beholden to us. That's what we do. Mm. We would have got David Black one of his, but he got in the way. And so we had to get him up out of there. Mm. That's what we had to do. Mm. But your day coming. The day of reckoning is coming. Sooner or later, Skip. It is coming. Sooner or later. I wait for it. I just don't. I wanted it to be in the first round. Yeah. But you wouldn't cooperate. You guys just tanked. I just don't know how you get to the East Coast mm -hmm. by driving if you don't take the 10. Mm -hmm. I just don't know how you do it. Mm -hmm. So you, if you want to go to the NBA Finals, I just don't know how you do it mm -hmm. without coming to see upstairs. You got to come upstairs, Skip, because mm -hmm. there ain't no doors. Ain't no doors in the basement. Mm -hmm. You got to come upstairs. Mm-hmm. Knock nicely. Yep. And then we're going to throw your butt out. We've been upstairs all year. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. You're scared. Yeah. You're scared. Mm. Because we came back and found that somebody might have been in our kitchen. Mm. And like, hold on, who been in the kitchen? And y'all talking, it wasn't us. I don't know what happened. We mm. stay in our place. Mm. You're exactly where you should. Stay in your place. But your day coming. Mm. You doing all this chirping. Everybody doing all the chirping. Don't think we didn't hear PG. Mm. Oh, they slandered my name. They, they I'm on their necks. Mm. I'm on their necks. Mm. And then we'll throw, about, we'll throw up them goofballs. Mm. Side of the backboard. His day coming too. And look at Kawhi. What mm. Kawhi did in the last 20 games, Skip? How mm. many 20 point games he had? I think two? Mm. Two? For Kawhi? Saving it for what they don't say nothing. What you, what you, what you saving the date for? So, this ain't no, this ain't no wedding. So you're this ain't no bigger you're, you're, agreement. You're like Goldilocks. <laughs> Somebody's been sleeping in my bed. Is that right? No, yeah. no, we got nothing. Huh. But your day coming. Guess who's been sleeping in your bed? Bears. I guarantee. Bears. I know they're I, going to eat you. I know one thing for sure. Two things for certain. Mm -hmm. You. Those guys yeah. and you, mm. y'all gonna have a day here before long. Mm. <laughs> How long? Not long, son. Mm. Not long. You know what? You sound scared to me. I wish and I, I might love be. it. I wish I might be loose. I keep loves skip, it. I keep telling you. Yep. As long as I got that six foot nine guy from Akron, yep. I fear nothing. I fear nothing. I go anywhere, anytime.
La oh. ankle? I go to west side of Chicago, I go to Detroit, I go to New York, mm. I go to the Serengeti and walk through a lion's den. Give me six foot nine, 262 mm. from Akron, Ohio. Mm. I'm dead. No mercy. Pro Football Focus has released their quarterback rankings of all 32 starters heading into the 2021 NFL season. And they have Patrick Mahomes in the top slot with Tom Brady in second. Aaron Rodgers closes out the top three and Russell Wilson is ranked at four. So, Shannon, do you agree with this ranking? Tell me. I probably would have put uh, Rodgers and Wilson in front of Brady Skip. I think the thing is the uncertainty was going on with Aaron Rodgers. Is he okay. going to be in Green Bay? Is he going to get traded? Um, so for me, I probably would have went Mahomes, Rodgers, uh, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady. But Tom deserves to be up there. And everybody keeps saying, well, Tom is going to be so much better in year two in this offense than, than he was the previous year. But does anybody think Mahomes will get better? Does anybody think Rodgers will be better in year three in LaFleur's offense? Does anybody think Russell Wilson? Russell Wilson just does Russell Wilson things every year. Five, six hundred, rush up. You know, he doesn't run the ball like he did early in his career, but his legs are still dangerous. Throws 30, 35 touchdowns every single season and wins a bunch of ball games. DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett only going to improve. So for me, I probably would have went Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady. But that should be that should be the top five. Maybe uh, Josh Allen, uh, uh, um, and I think they had uh, Deshaun Watson um, uh, in the at the fifth spot. But Rodgers is the reigning MVP, and that's what we're, we're basing on. The season. We're not talking about the end result and who's going to win the Super Bowl. That's not what Pro Football Focus did, Skip Bayless. So don't be coming here with your shenanigans because mm. I know what you're up to. It's all about the regular season. Attempts, yards, touchdown, completion percentage, QBR. Because if I'm not mistaken, last year QBR, Rodgers was one, Mahomes was two, Russell Wilson was eight, Tom Brady was nine. Mm. So with that being said, I would have make a slight, I, well, you know what? I fixed it. Pro Football Focus. I got Mahomes, Rogers, Wilson, Brady. Mm. I fixed your, your era. So I have just one question for you. Okay. When will you ever learn? learn how, how long? How many years of, of being humiliated <laughs> by Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. will it take for you to finally cease and desist and give in and give up and say, you know what? He's that guy. Skip, I got him at the fourth spot. What you want me to do? You just put Russell Wilson ahead of Tom Brady. How, how dare you? Skip. How, how, what would possess you to Skip. do that? Did you watch Russell last year after week seven? Mm -hmm. Do you know what Pro Football Focus ranked him after week seven last year? He was the 14th best quarterback in the NFL. Yeah. Do you remember what he did at home against the Rams in that playoff he game? He stuck it up. Stunk it up. He, he had did. a QBR of 17 on a scale of 0 to 100. He, he was 11 of 27. I get 11 it. of 27? And you just put him ahead of the guy who won four straight playoff games and won the Super Bowl in his first year with Tampa Bay? Oh, Skip. And see what you did, you added playoffs into the mix. Oh. All I'm talking about, they say the regular season, Skip. Who's going to have the best mm. season? Mm. Who, according to Pro Football Focus last year, ranked second in regular season grade? It was that guy Brady in Tampa Bay, right? Skip, I think That's that, what they did. I don't agree with their rankings. Okay, so they have him second. And the truth is, the God's truth of this is, if, if you just want to predict... Who is playing the best quarterback with the best supporting cast? Well, it's it's Brady. He should be number one on this list because all he did in the playoffs was rank number one in pro football. They didn't do the you added okay? playoffs. I know, but it's it's projecting into this coming season. Who's the best quarterback? So, so well, it's Brady. And it's by far. It's not even close. Can I ask you a question, Skip? So are you going to disregard his second half against Green Bay? Did you just disregard that? The three interceptions. Are you going to just disregard that? They were that? already had. He so had done the damage they needed to so do. And I, I kept telling you, Antoine Winfield Jr. was out for the game. They did not have their start. They they lost both their starting safety. You see what you did, Skip. And, and Brady's saying, I'm going to throw jump balls in the third quarter and early in the fourth to try to get us the, the definitive lead that they will not be able to come back from because he does respect but, but, Aaron Rodgers at Lambeau. But Skip, and what did Aaron Rodgers do right on schedule in the fourth quarter? He stunk it up. But Skip. 
You just gave Brady a pass that you would never give any other quarterback. He won the game. I'm, Skip, I'm not, say, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying if any other quarterback would have had that lead and just start willy-nilly turning the football over, mm -hmm. you would have crucified him. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that they didn't win the game. We know they won the game because they won the Super Bowl, so they had to win the championship game. But let's not pretend that he played lights out the entire game of the NFC Championship game because he didn't. Who was playing the best quarterback at the end of the year last year it's not even close Skip. sorry prior, I mean prior prior to the Super Bowl it's hard for me to say that Tom Brady was playing better than Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes I just refuse to believe that now if you want to base it on the totality at the end result winning the championship okay but if you just look at the pre up until Aaron Rodgers lost you could honestly say Tom Brady was playing better than Aaron Rodgers up until the end of the season you could honestly say that no you can't well, well, yes, I could. Well, how could you not say that? He'd beaten him head to head. It was 38 to 10 when they met during the regular season, right? But how many games and did he And Aaron Rodgers was, but you want to talk about stinking it up. He almost threw two straight pick sixes at Tampa Bay. Skip, if I got a high completion percentage, high QBR, more touchdowns, fewer interceptions, I mean, how did you play better? I, and I had the number one seed throughout the play, entirety of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So I, okay. I'm trying to figure out how you play so, better. So what had he done? He'd beaten a Rams team at home. With a backup quarterback in place of a Jerry You beat Goff. Tyler Heineke. Okay, so? Taylor, yeah. Taylor. Taylor Heineke. Yeah. You beat Taylor Heineke. Okay. But the guy they was did. taking the guy was taking online classes mm -hmm. two weeks prior. Okay. And you beat him. Okay. You and, proud of that? And then we beat Drew Brees at New Orleans. And then we beat Aaron Rodgers at Lambeau. And then we beat my homeboy you, in the Super Bowl. You be the guy, you be the guy in Drew Brees that had already turned in the retirement papers. Oh, really? He had already turned them in. Okay. You well, know that, I know I that. I think we we turned them in for that, him. No, now you turned yeah. them in for him. Mm -hmm. Skip. You guys won the Super Bowl. I'm not trying to discredit anything Tampa has done, mm. but I'm saying if you look at the regular season mm. and up until the game in which Aaron Rodgers played, he outplayed. Tom Brady for, 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 17, for 17, 18 games. You look at Mahomes, he outplayed him. Mahomes did a number on him, head to head. That's what you just said, head to head. Now, Brady turned around and got his revenge when it mattered the most in the Super Bowl, but he did not play my homeboy. Mm. Well, he's played him twice in playoff games and outplayed him both times. No, he did not play him. No, 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 he did not play him. No, that first game in Tampa, no, no, that first, no, Skip. That first game in Kansas City, my homeboy did a number on him. Did a did number on him? Yeah. Do, do you remember? Three straight third and ten conversions in overtime? That, and you think Mahomes played better than Skip, Brady? Mahomes, Stop. Skip, you remember now, Mahomes was down. They were down. And Mahomes mm -hmm. brought them all the way back and had the lead. Well, that's against that leaky Belichick defense. No, that, that's oh, see, now it's a defense. Well, it was but what would, completely leaky. Let me ask you a question. Do you believe New England would have won if Mahomes had gotten the ball first? Because in situations like that, both teams, both offenses were hot. So it was going to come down to who got the ball first. Mm. Well, all I know is I've never seen anybody, especially in overtime in an AFC championship game, convert three straight third and tens. It's impossible. It's impossibly great. You give him zero credit for that. Well, if, 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 if D4 could see and not line up offside, mm. they had to pick and the game would have been over. Yep. All I know is Tom Brady has cost you maybe 50 cases of Diet Mountain Dew on this show, and you will not back off. You, you continue to dig in and you continue to lose. And he's going to be 44 years of age. And I believe they're going to win every regular season game. So, right. I, I don't. Yeah, I do. But, but here's the thing, Skip. You keep talking about I would love to see the situation. If I were to take Mahomes and put him behind that offensive line, and I were to take uh, Rodgers and put him behind Tampa's offensive line, and then I want Brady to have to face what Rodgers and Mahomes face. Mm. So how do you, so do you believe if we flip it in the pass rush is on Brady like it was on Rodgers and Mahomes, mm -hmm. you think Brady winning that game? Mm. Here's the flip. If, if I had sent Patrick Mahomes to Tampa last year in the middle of the pandemic with no preseason, no preseason games, all virtual, and I threw him in with a seven and nine team known as the Suckineers because their franchise had the worst winning percentage in sports over their history. If, if that happened to Mahomes, there's no way he would have done what Brady did. Skip, you keep saying the Suckineers and we know their history. 
but you're making it seem as if they were devoid with talent. They were not. That's why Brady went I, there. A lot of teams have talent, and a not lot that, of teams finish seven skip. and nine. It's just like Peyton. Peyton went to Denver because mm -hmm. he saw they were loaded. They had a young and up-and-coming defense, and they were loaded with skill position. Wide receivers, tight ends, and the offensive line was they had Ryan Clady. They traded for Vasquez, so they had a nice offensive line. Mm. So let's not pretend that Brady went to a team that was the equivalent of talent as what he left in New England, because that's not true. Mm. That's not true. But Tebow had turned around the Broncos. Well, he had. You know it, and I know it. They're one and four under Kyle Orton, and then Tebow turned them around and won a playoff, won division in a playoff game, right? Had Jameis been more professional and did what he was supposed to do, this team was ready to win. That's why B.A. got so upset. He's like, yeah, we're seven and nine with a quarterback that played like this. I believe we can win and be better if the, we get a quarterback doesn't, that doesn't play like this. And he's absolutely right. Now, I don't think he thought that Tom Brady was going to fall out the sky in his lap, mm. but that's what happened. So not to diminish anything, but let's not pretend Tampa wasn't loaded with talent because they were. Because Brady do not play defense. That defense was up and coming. All you had not to do was put them in harm's way mm. so many times mm. like Jameis did. Mm. Brady did not. They were rested, and they feasted. Mm. What did Taylor Heineke do to that defense? But when they needed – hold on. They picked him. Mm. They picked him when they, when they needed to make a play, and that's what the mark of a great defense kept. And see, all these offenses that, oh, they scored 35 a game, and these defenses, they hold a 10 to 10. But can you hold a 10 to 10 when you mm. need to? Can you keep them out of field goal range when you need to? Can you go get a first down? Can you go get a touchdown when you need to have it? Mm -hmm. That's the mark of any great offense or defense. Can you get done when you need to get it done when you have to? Mm. Tampa, when they needed to bow their backs, Green Bay, y'all, you're not getting in this end zone. Mm. You're selling for field goals. No, uh, 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 Kansas City, we'll let you down here, but you're going to kick field goals. You're not getting in the end zone. So that's the mark of a good defense. Mm. And Brady was able to capitalize. They got a few turnovers. They played well, Skip, mm. but uh, uh, Brady is going to be 44. Mm. I mean, Father Ty got to catch up sometimes. That's what you tell so, me. Right? Are you ready to say he should go home now? Oh, there you go. Well, you've done it for five straight years. You yeah. might as well make it all, a, skip, six. All, all I'm saying right? is that your pro football focus ranking, mm. I just correct the little small error they made. A little small error. Yeah. Yeah. You're dropping behind <laughs> Russell Wilson. You bet. Hold on. You know what? Tom watches the show. We know he watches, and I think he just made mental note to self, got to prove Shannon wrong again. Skip, you make it seem like I put him behind Zach Wilson. Mm. Russell Wilson well, you is probably legit. probably would put him nah, behind Zach nah, Wilson. Nah. <laughs> no, Not yet. No, no, no. Not yet. 44 <laughs> years young. And, yes, you're right, Skip. He does watch our show. So, Shannon, thank you for continuing to motivate the GOAT because that's only going to yep. help Skip and I <laughs> as the season uh, gets closer and closer. No mercy. A play-in game featuring the King versus the quote-unquote MVP. LeBron lets it fly and hits. Steph Curry from downtown. LeBron with the hammer deep like the fries were at the bottom. You just have to bow down. Get ready. Playoffs are coming. This is judgment day. This, this is judgment day. Well, 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 the Lakers face off against the Warriors in tonight's play-in matchup. We are used to seeing LeBron and Steph Curry lock horns late in the postseason, where Curry and LeBron face each other in 22 NBA Finals games. And after the Lakers' final regular season game on Sunday, LeBron said, quote, for our paths to continue to cross in our careers is pretty unique and pretty cool. He also said the Warriors have, quote, championship DNA, which is very true. Fox Sports NBA analyst Chris Broussard joins us now. Chris, what is your score for tonight's game? I have got Lakers 117, Golden State Warriors 99. Really? And, and I hope I'm wrong. I hope that this is a very close and competitive game because last night, outside of Jason Tatum erupting for 50 points, uh, it was pretty underwhelming. So, uh, so far, not so good in the play-ins. So I hope it's a great game. And I wouldn't even mind, honestly. I mean, obviously, like everybody else, I want the Lakers to advance in the playoffs. But I wouldn't mind seeing Steph go berserk and have a historic performance and lead Golden State to the upset. But I just don't see it happening. The Lakers are the far superior team. Far superior. 
And with all due respect to the great Steph Curry, Klay Thompson and Kevin Durant are not walking through that door. All right, he's facing LeBron by himself for the most part. And LeBron's the best player. I think LeBron's going to come out and have a big game. AD is the third best player, so they got two of the three best players. And on top of that, they've got great defense, period. Even without LeBron and AD, they had great defense. And they defend Steph Curry better than any team in the NBA. Steph this year, in three games against the Lakers, he's averaged 23 points on 42% shooting. That, that 23 points a game, only two other teams has he scored less than against that he's played more than one time this season. And ever since LeBron has been in L.A., for some reason, the Lakers have been a nightmare for Steph Curry defensively. He's averaging seven games against the Lakers since LeBron's been there. Steph's averaged 16 points on 34% shooting, 25% from three. Those are all by far the lowest numbers he's put up against any team in the league. No other team holds him under 20 points a game. So I think the Lakers have the formula. Dennis Schroeder, I'm not saying he's going to shut down Steph, but he is going to hound Steph. He's going to pester Steph. He'll be like that little gnat that just bothers you and is always around and you're trying to get rid of him. And so I think they, they're going to beat the Warriors pretty handily tonight. Here's the fact. The Lakers are in this game because their two best players were hurt for half the season. The Warriors are in this game because this is what they are. Without their other great players, they are a seventh, eighth seed type team. True. That, that, that's, that's all true. Uh, I got the Lakers winning by 10. I got, I think I, I, well, I got, I said 10, but I got them winning. I think I said 12. 117, 117 to 105. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the Lakers are not, they're not going to get the 144 that we saw from Indiana last night. But I do believe that you, as you mentioned, they do a great job. And what I like about Golden State, Golden State don't let Steph handle the ball that much unless, you know, he's trying to get his shot off. But they let Draymond, they let other guys bring the ball up the court because they're not going to try and tire him out. But that's what the Lakers are going to try to do to him. They're going to blitz him. They're going to, they're going to jet him. They're going to have Schroeder hounding him, pick him up 94 feet, and then every time he touches the ball, they're going to look to trap him and get the ball out of his hand. And if Jordan Poole, if Kent Bazemore and Draymond and these other guys, Toscano Anderson, if they can beat you, you, you live with that. But I cannot let Steph go for 40. I cannot let Steph go for 50 and single-handedly beat me in this ball game. So this is why AD, this is a big basketball team. They're big, and they play traditional. Drummond is a big that doesn't shoot threes. AD 6'10 is a power forward. LeBron, he got him at point, but he's a, a small forward. So they have a big, big lineup. And then they can come with Gasol and, and um, KCP. So I love what the Lakers bring offensively. Now, we get a couple of these threes to fall, but I already know what Goat James going to do. He mm. playing downhill. Mm. That ankle, he, I, he played back-to-back, -back, Chris. He played back-to-back, -back and the, uh, the, the basketball guys, you know LeBron is a big basketball guy, I believe him. Mm -hmm. Game two days off, somebody's in a heap of trouble. Mm. Somebody's in a heap of trouble. Mm. And you know who it is? Two teams I know for sure. Mm. Golden State tonight and the Phoenix Suns. They're mm. in a heap of trouble. Still. Well, oh, now you're already yeah, they how, but they, 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 yeah, done, done deal. Mm. My turn. Chris Broussard, you were almost right. <laughs> Tonight's <laughs> final score will actually be 119 to 99. That's what I said to start this show. It's going to be a 20-point blowout because this marquee matchup is actually a mismatch on the court. Congratulations, <laughs> Shannon. You won the play-in game. I don't know how you fell into the play-in game. To the, the you know how. Place. I don't know how. AD it's pathetic. AD it's missed pathetic. half the season. You got the GOAT. LeBron the, the GOAT missed, can't be in a playoff game. LeBron James missed 27-28 oh, ball game. Stop it. La ankle, James. There you yeah. Go. <laughs> yeah. Th this is going to be a an all-time cakewalk because to Chris's point, Nobody does a bigger batter number on Steph Curry than the Lakers do. They go six or seven deep with defenders who can hound and haunt Steph tonight. Yep. I am here to predict. I believe Steph will go two for 14 from three tonight. Two of 14 from three because he's going to be trying to jack him up with two or three Lakers hanging all over him. It'll start with Schroeder. KCP will be in the yep. mix. Caruso will be in the mix. T 
THT will be in the mix. They'll be coming from everywhere because the whole point is just don't let him shoot the basketball. Well, you got to be careful, Skip, because, and don't file him because there are a lot of times that they filed him a couple of times last time shooting the three, and he got six easy points shooting the three. So we got we to gotta be smart. We're going to get the ball up out of his hands, though. Okay, he might get his average against the Lakers this year, which is only 23, which is nine oh. below what he averaged oh. to win the scoring Oh, I title. thought you were about to say you about to get his, his average of 32. I was like, well, we're no, going to be in no, trouble. He get 33 because he averaged 23 against you guys. Yeah. And by the way, in the three games, you wiped him out twice, 117 to 91. At, this was February 28th. And then the, the final game, the rubber game, was at, at Golden State. It was 128 to 97. You should have won we the first game. Him. We should have won. You were up 19 in the first game. You're up 14 with 11 minutes left. And the GOAT turned into the lowercase GOAT of the game because LeBron, down the stretch of that game, allowed Steph and company to win 32 to 16. He had a bad they were game, up Skip. 14 in the fourth quarter, and LeBron goes down the stretch 0 for 4 from the field, 0 for 3 from 3. He scored two points the rest of the way. And could we see it one more time yeah, just for posterity? Not, you go, man. He had the what? shot to wipe it all out. He could have just closed the deal right here. Shoot it, LeBron. That's for the game, and that's unclutch as usual. So, so way no, to go. Right, just to make sure I'm correct. Yep. So LeBron James is the only great player that's missed the last second shot this year. Nope, but okay. he's missed more than his share. And again, you've got the antidote. They keep talking about the head of the snake is Steph. There's no body to the, the snake. It just yeah, it has is. a head. Yep. The head comes in, and you just say, we will take the head out of play right. as it steps across half They court. still got Draymond. We got to neutralize Draymond, too, because Draymond, you yeah, know, what's Draymond. he average? Seven points a game? Yeah, but yeah, he neutralizes. Yeah, but he, but he averaged it like. Nine rebounds and nine assists. Okay, so. <laughs> way to go. Yeah, congratulations. What, what are he, they, the 19th he, yeah, in offensive actually, efficiency? Man. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, they just don't have much. Draymond's been shooting it better lately. He's really been playing well. I do think he is in playoff mode, but they, they can't play with the Lakers. It's as simple as that. And everybody's moved up a spot, right? I think Andrew Wiggins is a terrific fourth option. Like, I think he's a great fourth option. He's a okay, pretty good third option. But now, without Clay there, he's the second option, and that's not what they need him to be. He might have a big game scoring if they really take the ball out of Steph's hands and shut him down, but he's not going to be enough to beat the Lakers and maybe even keep them competitive with the Lakers. Because we're going to do a number on him, because you know mm -hmm. he's going to start out on, on Go James. And we're gonna take him down to the post. Mm. And if they don't come with a double team, we're gonna take we're gonna we're gonna put him in the basket. Mm. And if you come with a double team, we're gonna pass up out of it. Mm. AD getting a dunk, and you see drum. And I told you, Chris, I told you, I said, Chris, all drum is waiting on is Goat James to get back. I don't care what he's doing with these other guys. I just need him to be drum when Goat James come back. You see what we do in the high pick and roll. He's owning the glass, giving us extra opportunities. <laughs> The big penguin? Yeah, old draw. Yeah, but don't don't have him have to shoot a one-foot one <laughs> wide-open layup to win the game because he's going to gag that. Skip, Skip, he missed a couple of those, okay? Yeah. But it's okay. Yeah, he it's, misses more layups than anybody in the league. You that know is that. correct. Thank yeah, I don't you. know if that's factual, he, but he's he, up there. He, 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 he's really anxious. He just needs to slow down. I mean, you got to realize he's playing with Go James. And Go James, that, that pressure that comes along knowing that you're on the big stage, knowing you're not in Detroit anymore. You're not in Cleveland. Mm. You're not on a bunch of last place teams. You're playing, you're vying for a championship. So the, the, the focus needs to be honed in, needs to be to button down. Yep. It will be tonight. Final thought. If I thought that there was some bad blood between these teams, oh. I might give Golden State a <laughs> shot. But no, LeBron has done what he does so beautifully. He has won over both Draymond and Steph. They're now best friends of his. They come in to Staples. They genuflect at the no, sight of the king. No, they don't. It's your house. It's your game. It's hey. your show. Skip, you know where LeBron got that from. You know who did that? Hmm. Michael Jordan. That's why Pat Riley didn't want his players going out with Jordan at, to dinner the night before playoff games. Because mm. Jordan would do the same thing, soften them up, take them out to dinner. Play golf with them. <laughs> play play, golf. Skip Bayless never had a problem with him going to play golf with Danny Ainge. He, playing he, golf with, with all the guys. They were playing for thousands of dollars and Jordan cleaned him out. Okay. <laughs> But you have no problem him going to jail. Yeah, it was it for blood. It gets in your head a little but bit. That's okay, but I understand that. It's competitive yeah, on we're competitive. all fronts. Extremely. No um, mercy. 
After losing to the Celtics last night, the Wizards head to an elimination game on Thursday against Indiana. Russell Westbrook had one rebound, zero assists in the second half, and appeared to head to the locker room early. The Wizards shot three of 21 from three, and when asked of the team's shooting struggles after the game, Westbrook was blunt, saying, quote, sleep happens. I think you guys know what I would have said there. So Chris Broussard still with us. Chris, how do you explain Westbrook's second half? Well, I think he was bad all night. You know, the first half he shot three for nine. The second half he shot three for nine. He did have the 13 rebounds and five assists in the first half. And I've never been one to discredit Russell Westbrook's triple doubles. I've never discredited his rebounds. A lot of people said he hunts for rebounds. His teammates let him get these rebounds to get the triple doubles. I've never bought into that uh, because his teams have won 75% of the games in which he's gotten a triple-double, so they haven't been empty numbers. But I got to admit, last night, there were several times where it it looked like he was just... I didn't know who he was guarding. Like, he would just kind of hang around and float around the paint while the perimeter guy he should be guarding is kind of out by the three-point line. And that gives you the impression, is he just trying to get these rebounds? And so I, I didn't think he was good all night. The assists, none in the second half... The Wizards shot pretty well in the first half, 50%. Second half shot 36%, only 17% from three. So that obviously makes it tougher to get rebounds. But I think with Westbrook, what happens to him in the playoffs often, and even the play-in now, is that teams have more opportunity to zero in on an opponent, right? Even in a play-in where it's not a series, it's just one game, but you still can focus in on a team unlike you really can in the regular season. And so you can take away more of what they like to do. And Russ, as great as he is, doesn't have the skill set to kind of fall back on. He's not a great shooter. He's not even a a really good shooter, you know? And so he doesn't have the three-pointer to fall back on. He really doesn't have the jump shot, period, to fall back on. And he also doesn't have great moves. It's not like he's shaking guys up and all that. He overwhelms opponents with his speed and athleticism, and and he does that during the regular season. But in the playoffs, when you can focus in on him, especially when he doesn't have another great player, and I know Beal is is an all-star, but he wasn't very good last night either, I think that's why defenses can make it much harder on Russ in the playoffs than they do in the regular season. He was bad. Kip, it's as simple as that. Chris, it's as simple as that. He was bad last night. Um, as you said, he's not very eff- – normally, we know this. Rush isn't efficient, but he's effective. As you mentioned, Chris, he gets triple-doubles, and triple-doubles, they normally a lot of times equate to them winning ball games. but he's not going to shoot a high percentage from the floor. He shot a career low. He was under 40% from the floor this year. That's not good in any metric. No analytics will tell you that is a good percentage. From the floor. Yeah, if you're shooting that from the three, but he shot that from the floor, from the regular, not not the three-point line, the floor. He shot 31% from the three. He was just bad. And like you said, he's floating around and looking for, trying to get some cheap rebounds, and his guys are making buckets. That The thing that I wanted to see is that Russell gets these rest, these, these, these numbers in the regular season. Chris, we got to see him get these in the playoffs. Because you say the, the triple doubles mean something, then well, they're going to mean something in the playoff. And we haven't seen him put those together. We see him get knocked out the first round every single time since KD left. And that to get them there, that's, that's an accomplishment in and of itself. But I believe to take that next step and to be thought of how he, how some view him. Because I, me personally, I don't, believe, I, don't give, I don't believe Russ give a damn how you think of him. I don't care if he, he don't sleep like, man, man, if I, ooh, man, I can't, I, I got to get this championship. That's not him. That's, I don't believe he's wired like that. I play as hard as I can. I give it everything I got. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But last night, he was awful. Bradley Beal's out there on one leg, doing all he can. He didn't shoot great from the floor. But they needed to play in order to offset with Jason Tatum. They needed to probably have about 65, 70 points between the two. And one of those guys needed to be very efficient from the floor. And since neither one was efficient, the game got out of hand from him. Mm. 
I'm sorry, but I cannot say it's as simple as he was just bad. <laughs> Something happened last night. I've watched literally hundreds of Russell Westbrook games since he was a rookie in Oklahoma City. That was not Russell Westbrook in the second half. And I get it, three for nine in the first half, three for nine. But when you get one rebound with no assist in the second half, you have unplugged. I appreciate what Chris is saying about defense. He, he just completely disengaged on all facets of the game. He was no longer there. I don't know what happened at halftime. I don't know if they had some blow up at halftime. They were up eight with a minute 40 left in the first half, and it dwindled down to two at halftime. But I still thought they were in position to close the deal in the third quarter, and they did not show up out of the locker room for the third quarter in which Jason Tatum scored 23, Boston scored 38, and just pulled away, and basically the game was done. Yep. And Russell Westbrook looked done from the start of the third quarter, and I don't know why. I have no idea if there's some blow-up with coaches or teammates or whatever. Maybe he was just frustrated because his running mate, his co-star, was playing, as, as he called himself, I was the one-leg ban bandit, said Bradley Beal after the game. Mm -hmm. But this, unfortunately, just further enhances Russ's reputation for being the all-time greatest stat machine who prioritizes starring over winning, especially in the postseason. This was the game where just by sheer force of will, we both thought, Shannon and I thought, mm -hmm. that, that he could just overwhelm and overpower a Boston team that had lost five of six and six of eight. They didn't have Jalen Brown. That, that Marcus Smart got hurt last night. Robert Williams got hurt and was out. They just looked like they were literally on their last leg. And here came what? Russell Westbrook? So, again, he's a horrible three-point shooter. We get that. But he usually can cancel all that out with just sheer force of will. Well, where was it? I don't know what happened. And then he walks off, and we've seen it several times today, he, they sub for him at 3:45 left, and then he just walks to the yeah. locker room. I, I thought he, I thought he tweaks Gib, but normally what he could do, even though he's not shooting a high percentage from the three-point line, he can normally get to the paint. But he couldn't get to the paint. They cut the paint off. He picked up a couple of charges, tried to run over people, and that's him. A lot of times they're three on one, and Russ like, I'm going to the basket. Well, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. I mean, and he missed a shot. Skip showed it early. He missed a shot. He was on one side of the rim. He shot the ball clear over the rim and hit the backboard on the other side. He, he, he just, he wasn't good last night. And he's going to have to be better. They, I don't know. I think they play Indiana tonight or tomorrow. Tomorrow. But he's going to have to be much better in order for them. Because uh, even though they don't have Karis LeVert, Brogdon came back. So bonus is a monster on the glass. Uh, they got some guys that can put the ball in the basket, so they're going to have to be on their best behavior or they're going home. <sighs> Skip, you made a good point. I mean, his body language was bad. And, and, and you're right. I mean, did something happen? Did he tweak an injury? He, I mean, as he walking, you saw him in the hall. Yeah. Looked yeah. like maybe it's something injured. Is that what was upsetting him? Was there a situation with teammates? I don't know, but... His body language was much worse in the second half. I think this is an interesting thing with Russell Westbrook. And you guys, I think, discussed it after he broke Oscar Robertson's triple-double record. Is he the best player ever or never to win a championship? I don't think he's the best. I, I, I'll take James Harden over him. At this point, Harden doesn't have a title. Uh, I, I think, obviously, you argue for Carl Malone or Charles Barkley. But I think it's interesting because... As time goes on and, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now, there'll be a lot more people in the media that really didn't see Russell Westbrook, at least up close and personal. And the details will get murky. You know, you won't remember that he wasn't really great with time and score and he, he didn't really know how to pace himself and, and, and wasn't a point guard, didn't have that point guard mentality. All of that will kind of get fuzzy and people will just look at the numbers. And they'll see, he averaged a triple-double for four years. He's got to be the greatest player never right. to win the championship. So it'll be interesting to see how history remembers him. He'll be an icon and a legend, as he should be for these accomplishments. But I wonder if he will eventually get that label as the best player never to win the championship simply because of his numbers. 
Well, I had a problem with Scotty Brooks saying he's the second best point guard ever. I think Scotty Brooks has to been drinking because he's out of his mind if he thinks Russell Westbrook is the second best point <laughs> no, guard he's ever. he's coaching Russell Westbrook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I, don't do hyperbole. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so now, to me, Russell is back on a fairly hot seat because he better rise and shine yeah. against Indiana at home. They get a home game to, to get the eighth seed. Right. And after the year he had, that's the fourth triple-double year out of five. He, he, come on, you, you better show us. And that's the thing, Skip. And Think about it. All those years, for the most part, they went to the playoffs. And then how many triple-doubles did he have once he got to the playoffs? So we don't see that same energy. We don't see the same yep. that same uh, 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 imprint on a ball game we don't. in the playoff that we see in the regular season. And the really greats, if you look at the really greats, what do they do come playoff time, Chris? They elevate. They score more. You look at Kevin Durant's scoring average. It's higher in the playoffs. Jordan is higher in the playoffs. Yo, LeBron, these guys, they elevate their scoring. So if Russ wants to be thought of in that, those circles, he's going to have to do what he did in the regular season, he's going to have to put some games like that together in the playoffs. Yeah, I'm telling you, I think it's the, the lack of skills. I mean, to a certain level, relatively speaking. It, he doesn't have the jumper to fall back on. He doesn't have the moves to just shake you up. So when the no. defense knows your tendencies and what you want to do, I think they can take a lot away from Russ. His numbers are still good. You look at them. They're not the regular season numbers, but he still gets his numbers. But without with terrible efficiency yeah. in, in five of the eight playoff series he's played in over the last five years, he shot less than 40 yeah. percent. And that volume score, that just won't get it done. No. And, yeah. and another guy, Allen Iverson, was a volume score. He didn't get it done in the playoffs for the most part, other than the one year when they went to the finals. No mercy. Saturday, MLB is back on Fox, headlined by an interleague showdown between the Red Sox and Phillies, or it's two of the greatest rivalries in baseball as the Dodgers take on the Giants and the Cubs face the Cardinals. Saturday, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. So check local listings for the game in your area. After signing a four-year, $160 million contract extension this offseason, expectations are high for Dak Prescott and company. And Pro Football Focus released their quarterback rankings heading into the 2021 NFL season and have Dak ranked seventh. So, Shannon, should he be ranked this high, in your opinion? Where you nah, got that too high. Mm. Too high, Skip. Okay. Too high, too high, too high. <laughs> um, we know the numbers Dak put up. But we also know how he puts those numbers up. 88% of the yards Dak puts up comes when they're trailing. 47% of the yards that he puts up coming comes when they're trailing by at least two touchdowns. Mm. I mean, empty calories. Hey, I'm doing all this working out. Remember I tell you, Skip, you can't ex out-exercise a bad diet. Mm. So in other words, Dak's doing all this for nothing because he's still losing the game because mm. you, you told me they ain't going to the playoff last couple of years. So in other words, he's putting up all these stats, empty calories, no nutritional value, mm. which means playoff wins. Mm. They got him in front of Lamar, Matt Stafford, uh, uh, Matt Ryan, Justin Herbert. Now, Skip, we have to understand the offensive line that was so touted when Dak first got there, mm -hmm. they're not the same. The guy that they took in the, dra in the same draft with the, what, the, third, the fourth or fifth pick in the draft, he's not the same behind him. Zeke. So, oh, but he got those three receivers. Nah, nah, he too high, Skip. Mm. Too high. Maybe 10. Mm. I might be willing to give you 10. But uh, not seven, because mm. I, I would put Stafford in front of him. I put Justin Herbert in front of him. Not what I would do. Okay. So to your point about empty calories and how you can't sort of outwork them, mm -hmm. back in my hardcore marathon running days, I used to eat like a pig, but I was running 100 miles a week, and yeah. I thought, well, I'll just exercise it off. It's almost like <laughs> exercise bulimia. Yeah. And it won't work. It won't. It will, I, I, I had much more body fat on me in my hardest core marathon days than I have right now. Right. So the point is, to your point, there are way too many empty calories. If those games you're talking about, they'd come back and won every one of them, right. that'd be fine with me. Yes. The way they came back and shocked Atlanta 40 to 39. Right. But that was a lot about Dan Quinn's defense. It was the fifth worst pass defense in the history of the league yeah. last year. Yeah. Well, he did that. Yeah. But what about the last 17 starts that I've watched Dak Prescott? He's 6 and 11. Mm. What happened down the stretch of 2019 after they started 3 and 0? He was 
He was pathetic by, by his standards. And, and even Pro Football Focus says in his ranking that in his four full NFL seasons, he's had two top 10 finishes by their grading system. Right. He's also had two closer to the 20s. Well, he has. Yes. I got it. So I am, you know what? A lot of this is because Jerry caved and gave him the biggest <laughs> signing bonus ever and the most guaranteed money in the history of this league. Pro Football Focus is saying, well, he's he's got to be like yeah, we got seven. Yeah. He's making right? that money. He's making that right. much. Right. So we got to put him up here. But I am with you. I need to see a little or a lot more. Right. And and I'm with you. He right now he's not better than Lamar, who's one slot behind him. Right. He's not better than Matt Ryan right right now. Right. I can't do that. Listen, Baker Mayfield. You're not a fan, but you used to be for a little while. You drove the bandwagon, but. But over the last 13 games last year, Baker was really good. He right. graded second over the last 13 games by Pro Football right. Focus. Well, he's two slots, about three slots back at 10. I'm not sure he's not right now deserving of a higher slot than Dak. And don't look now, but Justin Herbert is only going to get he, better. He, he will only get better. I, I don't know if he's done quite enough just yet, but the point is, all I know for sure is I will win five more cases of due because Dak, just by default, is still no, the best not. quarterback in the NFC but even, at least. He, but, but here's the thing, though, Skip. He might be, but that doesn't mean your team is the best. Your team. What about your team? Washington has a better defense. The Giants have a better has, has a better defense. It has so. a very comparable offense. Mm. So when the it does not have a comparable, comparable. offense, you're stuck with Daniel Jones. You're betting on the wrong horse, and Washington is stuck with Fitzmagic, who will have his moments, or Taylor Heineke. You won't right? say you like Saquon. Yeah. Okay. No, I got it, but it's a quarterback's game. You you agree with me yeah, on that? Yeah, it is. Okay. But hold on. You just said your quarterback needs to show you something. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. Yeah, but so. he's got weapons on offense th that that others don't have. Evan Ingram, Slayton, mm -hmm. Galladay, Shepard, Kadarius, Tony. I like what they can say, Quan. Mm -hmm. C.D., Amari, Gallup, Blake Jarwin. I told you what. I like what I got. I told you what the C.D. C.D. males pile up last year. Mm-hmm. Now, you remember when Dak with Dak last healthy season, all you had to do was win one game, mm -hmm. one game, and you win the division. And what happened? Mm. You couldn't win one game. One. I agreed. I, I'm with you. I didn't see enough. I thought Jerry overpaid. But at least he's still a cowboy, and at least the fog has been lifted off my team. Yeah. So here we come. And we have weapons on offense because our offensive line will stay healthy this year. I'm going to knock on wood. What makes you? I just, I just believe it. By, but the odds are with us. No, it ain't. Yes, they are. Skip. Tyron Smith has They're been hurt. They're not too old, though. No, They're not too old. That's the key. No, Skip. In age, as far as like normal human beings, no, they're young men. But in football years, with all the collisions that's been on those bodies, mm -hmm. yeah, you see Tyron Smith is missing more time, and the injuries are keeping him out longer. Mm -hmm. Zach Martin, all of a sudden, Zach Martin never got hurt. Mm -hmm. Now he's ding. Mm -hmm. Lyle Collins is coming back from a torn labrum in his hip. Mm -hmm. They say he's 100%. What doc, what doc is going to say, you know what, yeah, I did that surgery. He like 55%. <laughs> what the how you expect me to say, Skip? Dak, I'm still worried about Dak's health, but they say he's had a schedule. What well, else are they going to say? Yeah, exactly. So right? what we'll see, we'll see the first time we get out there and he has to get away from somebody. Mm -hmm. We'll see how he runs. Yep. But, I'm good in the East. I will win my five cases of due in the least. So That's all I got. So you agree with me, Dak is mm -hmm. ranked too high in this ranking. He is ranked too high. And I don't like the expectation because he came off that horrible 2019. Then we go into last year. And, and what do I see? He's fourth in the MVP odds, and I'm saying, is it the CD effect? I mean, he coming, Lamb? I mean coming off a major injury, offensive line isn't mm -hmm. the same, running back isn't the yep. same, defense is still a question mark, and y'all got him seven. I, it's not y'all. I don't have Do you him believe seven. in it. It's your Bible. No, so I, I don't. You, oh, you, I, I oh. don't believe in this ranking. This is the first time I've ever disagreed with pro football folks. Well, you should disagree Brady with Brady should have been one. No, 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 should have no, no, been no, no. 12th. No, that, no, first of all, no, no. Tom Brady should not be number one. We're not going to relitigate that, but that shouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. It's over. Case closed. Four. Next question. No mercy. He trained the one and only Michael Jordan and some of the world's most elite athletes. And he's also got a new book out, Winning the Unforgiving Race to Greatness. We're now joined by the legendary Tim Grover. Uh, thank you so much for being with us this morning, Tim. In addition to MJ, you trained Kobe Bryant and you attended the Hall of Fame induction yes. ceremony this past weekend. What was your biggest takeaway from being there? 
You know what? It was very bittersweet, but Vanessa did an unbelievable job. I mean, to, yeah. to be able to deal with all those emotions that everything was going on during that moment, it was, she was flawless. She was absolutely flawless. But my biggest takeaway was to see, you know, my two biggest clients on stage one there in person and the other being represented in spirit and everything, just to see them and know what the bond they actually had with each other. And for MJ to go out and do this per Vanessa's request and just, you could see how he was emotional too and how he was trying to hold back his feelings during the whole thing. But just to see my two guys out there, just well-deserved on both of them. Mm. Well said. So before I ask my first question, Tim, allow me to say I have read Winning. It is intense. It is powerfully written. It basically just grabs you by the throat and says to you, if you want to be Jordan-esque or Kobe-esque in whatever your endeavor in your life, that you have to basically dedicate your entire existence to the pursuit of winning. And one of the chapter titles stuck in my, my psyche Winning takes you to hell, and if you quit, that's where you'll stay, is in hell. Yeah. So the point yes. is, now we get back to Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. I always thought that Kobe was the closest to Jordan in mindset, in killer will. But as you train both of these men, what, what key difference did you find between Kobe and Michael? Well, this is what I always said. Kobe worked out harder. Michael worked out smarter. Yeah. All right. Kobe wanted to know every single detail. He wanted to know why the reps, how many, why you were doing this exercise, why we're working out at this particular time. Why, why am I eating this? He wanted to know every single detail. Why would I would change the order of stuff? Just that Michael was like, Hey, I hired you. I trust you. I don't want this to be my focus. Just if I question you, make sure you have an answer. Don't guess. If you don't know, go ask somebody and figure it out. But both of them extremely, extremely intense. With Michael, I could get him to stop. He knew when enough was enough. He's like, you know, this is what I need. My hardest transition with Kobe was getting him to stop. <laughs> was like, all right, your body needs time to recover. We got to stop doing this. You're actually working out too. You're working out too much. All right, we cannot shoot a thousand shots today. We got to cut that in half. And that was a battle that we had all the, uh, going on back and forth. And it took us a while for him to build that trust in me. But Kobe really took off when he started to realize that, yeah, I need to actually do less. Mm. Was that because Kobe was chasing Michael? Michael wasn't chasing anybody except Michael, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, he's just like, listen, Kobe's mentality was I got to do more. I got to do more. I got to do more. Because if you feel like you're trying to close that gap in the chase, and if you feel like you're doing less, that gap in your mind actually widens. And I had to kind of convince him, hey, this is the way Michael did it. This is the way you want to be as close to him as possible. These are the things that he did. I'm not trying to tell you to do exactly the way he did it, but these are some of the things that we implemented in his career that actually allowed him to have extreme longevity and play at the highest level. Mm. Do you believe that Kobe came to you because you trained Michael and Michael has had such great success and that was the path that he wanted to go along? And Two-part question. And when an athlete comes to Tim Grover, what do you think that athlete is hoping to accomplish? Well, Shannon, you are absolutely right. So in 2007, Kobe actually reached out to Michael and said, listen, I'm having a lot of issues with my knees. And he goes, do you got any recommendation? And Michael said, listen, this is not what I, this is not what I do, but I'm not using Grover anymore. He said, why don't you give him a, why don't you give him a call? So, so those were the two connections there. And it was funny because during when Michael was playing, he would always say, listen, I don't pay Grover to train me. I pay him not to train anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So that, that was it. That was it. That was his line. And then, so, you know, the relationship and the work ethic that MJ saw in Kobe, he said, this would be a perfect fit. And he said, this is a perfect guy for you because he, he's not a yes person. He's he's not a starstruck individual. He's as he's as messed up as you are in the head, just like I'm as messed up as my clients are. 
why don't you give him a try? I flew out to LA, we talked about some things and he explained to me what was going on. He introduced me to the members of his personal performance team and we made some adjustments there. And you know, the results were two more, two more championships and gold medals. Mm. And the second part, you know what? You guys know this and you have this all the time. People will always say this, I'll do anything. But their definition of anything is completely different than my definition of anything. Mm -hmm. You know, it'd be like, you know, oh, yeah, I could do what you guys do. No, they can't. All right. No, they can't. So what is your definition of anything? So I would always this is the, this is a test I get. I give to all the athletes. We sit down, we talk, see what's going on. And then I'll say, I'll see you at three thirty. All right. I don't tell them a.m. or p.m. <laughs> I don't tell them a or very few show up. Well, they're like, they don't ask. So they automatically assume 3.30 p.m. I'm at 3.30 a.m. What else do you have to do? What's the most important thing in your life right now? Is it to get better? Is it to get your mindset right? Is it to pay attention to your craft? So they'll come in, they'll roll in about 3.30 in the gym. I'll still be there p.m. wise. And I'll say you're 12 hours late. You're 12, you said you would do anything. So if you're willing to do anything, well, what was more important that you had to get done that you couldn't show up at this particular time? Hmm. So LeBron James is, is trained by Mike Mancius, who once upon a time was an intern of yours, a protege of yours. Yes. How, how impressed have you been with the job Mike has done with LeBron, who's obviously as durable a superstar as we have ever seen? Mike's done an incredible job with him. I mean, if you think about it, I could be, you guys don't know this more than I will. This is probably the longest LeBron's ever been out before, you know, with this high ankle sprain, which actually wasn't caused by him, you know, stepping on somebody's foot or something that he did, you know, Somebody else dove for the ball. They landed on his ankle and he turned. But, and this is what, his 17th, 18th year in the league? I mean, you got to give a testament to the way he takes care of his body, the way he invests in himself to keep himself healthy. And, you know, Mike gets a lot of credit for that. The one thing I don't understand is everybody's so shocked about, you know, oh, he, he invests over a million dollars in his body. That's your craft. That's your craft. Shouldn't you be shouldn't you be doing everything possible, all athletes out there? All right, you don't have to invest that much money if you don't have that kind of funding, but you should be investing as much in yourself with taking care of the machine that allows you to perform at the highest level. Mm. You, the last dance, you saw that documentary last year, it was very prominent, you had a role in it. Is there anything that you learned uh, watching The Last Dance, or is there anything that you would like to have seen added to The Last Dance? You know what? It brought back a lot of memories to me of things that I had caught, uh, I had forgotten. Now, you know, I never worked for the organization. I was always independent to whoever my client, whoever my client was. So a lot of the locker room stuff I had heard through different conversations I had with Michael, Scotty, and Ron, but those things to really see what was actually going on in the inside was like, wow. But just this, the thing I took away from it is, you know, that last season, think about it. You going into your job, your performance, and on the first day they tell you whether you win the championship or you lose every game, you're not coming back. The coach is not, the coach is not coming back. The whole team is gonna be, the whole team is gonna be dismantled. And to have that mindset and be able to pull yourself together and say, hey, those are the obstacles that I need to overcome. And knowing that Scotty's not even going to be coming back for, you know, 30 plus games. How many individuals would you know would have just thrown it in? And Michael said, no, this is not the way this is going to end. This is going to end for this is going to end for me. That was one of my biggest things about it, just to see how he handled all that adversity that was not, that was thrown at him that we all kind of knew what was going to happen, but was really didn't know until it actually did. But to see the relationship of how, how it really was with the 
general managers and the coaches and the different stuff that was going on behind the scenes. I knew what was going on with the teams. Everybody knew what was going on with Michael, Dennis, and all that other stuff. But some of the other stuff was just like, I was like, wow, I didn't know how deep it was. Tim, let me ask you, wait, I mean, you said, Michael said, I'm not paying you to train me. I'm paying you not to train anyone else. And I remember when I would fly my massage therapist out to Atlanta, I had to take the whole book, Skip, so he was working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so I had to buy all those clients. So for, for you, for you, for you, Tim, not that you just to have one client, whoo, that, you got to really love that client because that's taken, you know, arguably a lot of, you know, money and food off your table because you got to specialize like, okay, this guy only wants me to train him and I could be training yes. him, 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 and him. Yeah. Yeah. For the first three years, it was just, it was just him. But listen, we all do things that we feel is best for us, what the, our definition and our language of winning is. Right. And that, that was the most important thing. I mean, I was fortunate enough, my first professional client was Michael Jordan. I mean, how many people get that out? How many people get that out, that, that opportunity? And whatever he, whatever he needed, I had a support system with my, uh, with my parents during that time. So I was like, hey, listen, if this is what needs to be done, let, let's get it done. And it, the crazy part is, I never asked them, hey, we never discussed salary. We never discussed money. We never discussed any of that stuff. I knew the opportunity. When you look at Michael, everybody knows through all the years how underpaid he was to do his thing. All right. But he was just, let me just focus on my craft. Let me just focus on my craft. Let me be the best player possible and everything else will take care of itself. And I had the same similar mindset. Let me just be the best trainer out there with the highest profile client and everything else will take care of itself. You got to believe you got to, you got to gamble on yourself. You got to gamble on mm. yourself. So Tim, yesterday, Russell Wilson announced that you will now be overseeing his training. He had a, a rough finish to the year last year. What's the first thing you could do to help bring him back to his Jordan-esque level? Well, Again, he had a perform. He has a, a very extensive uh, performance team, and there was a lot of pieces that weren't fitting correctly. There were some individuals that weren't agreeing with what somebody else was doing. So it was I, I'm brought in to kind of oversee all that stuff, eliminate the unessentials, put the things in the correct order, and you know get him in the best physical and mental condition possible for the endurance uh, for the long NFL season that's coming up. Obviously I'm not privy to what happened. If I remember right, didn't they start eight and oh and then they mm -hmm. there was like a little <laughs> there was a significant yeah. downturn. And I, I'm not privy to what happened during that time. At some point I will be, but obviously our job is to dethrone the GOAT. <laughs> to perform as a highest, you know, that's where I'm brought in. I'm not brought in. I'm not brought in to finish, to finish second. I can control what I can control. He can control what he can control. But, you know, let's face it. We know who the number one guy is, the number one player in the NFL at that position. And our job is to take winning from him. So in other words, Tim, you're, you're, you're a mercenary. <laughs> you're a hired gun. <laughs> Hey, whatever you want to call it, whatever you, whatever, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, Wilson, well, lucky to have you. I, Tim, I, thank you so much for joining us today. Good luck to you. Thank you so much. Seriously. Listen, you know, I'm a huge fan of everybody of you guys. I respect you. I, I love the debates that go back and forth. And, you know, people don't know. I go back to Skip when he used to do when he used to write for a local newspaper and used to do this show called Cold Pizza. I did. And then Shannon, you and I, we used to be endorsers of EAS at yep. the same time, but we didn't we didn't know it. We didn't know each other back then. Yep. I love that, Tim. I will be yeah. reading your new book, Winning. I will also be waking up and working out. Uh, in theory, I will try to be with my friend Skip over here because you got to commit to it. If you want to be the best, you got to do the best. Exactly. Uh, we appreciate your time, Tim. Thank you so much. No mercy. Best NASCAR season ever it continues as the Cup Series makes its long-awaited debut at Circuit of the Americas Road Course in Austin, Texas. The green flag drops at 2.30 Eastern only on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Well, the Indiana
Indiana Pacers obliterated the visiting Charlotte Hornets 144 to 117 last night to advance in the Eastern Conference play-in tournament. Melo Ball, who is the Fox Bet favorite for Rookie of the Year, made just four of 14 shots to finish with 14 points and a uh, minus 35 on the court. Shannon, please give LaMelo a grade for his first playoff game. He got the same grade everybody got. Uh -oh. uh, everybody failed. Ooh. This was an fa epic failure from start to finish, Skip. They approached this game like, okay, we got another game on Wednesday. So we, I mean, on, on Thursday. So we straight. We good. No, bro, you go home. Your season over. This is it. This but I think they said no Karis LeVert. We'll, we'll yeah, be okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But, Skip, and I get it. Look, there was no Gordon Hayward and... Mm -hmm. When Melo got hurt, they were playing really, really well. And he, when he got back, they still weren't the same team. No. Nope. But this is, a, this, is a, this is unforgivable. You can't get up 144 points. It, it was embarrassing. 144. I mean, y'all didn't even try to play. This was, this was bad. This was, this was bad. And it seems like, you know, Melo really never gained uh, since he broke that risk. He was always grabbing it. Seemed like he hurt his shoulder last night in last night's game, Skip. This was, this was an epic collapse. Now, obviously, this is a very young basketball team. They do have something to build on because they did make it to the play-in tournament. But this was an epic failure on, on epic proportion from everybody. Not just, not just LaMelo. Rozier didn't play well. No. P.J. Washington. No. Bridges. Zeller. No. Devontae Graham. Agreed, agreed, everybody agreed. Awful. Awful. So, allow me to say, I really loved watching this kid play basketball yes. because he loves to play the game of basketball, and he can play it at a high level. He is a gifted kid. He's still 19 years of age, and I'm going to be softy today. I'm going to give him an incomplete right? because he did fracture his right wrist. Right. It's his shooting yes. wrist. Right. And he just never seemed right. He missed no. 21 games and maybe rushed back a little bit. And, right. and after he rushed back, they lost 7 of 10. And last night would make it 8 of their last 11 that mm -hmm. they lost. Was, was he pathetic last night? Yep, they all were. Yeah. And I, I'm with you on that, but I can't even give him an F. I'm going to give him... I guess a pass to, to next time because there's going to be a next time with this team because I like what James Warrego has done with this team. And if they can get whole and healthy, they're going to be a factor next year. And I don't think they'll be in the play in next year. I think they'll be a playoff team next year. Okay, but when you look at these guys, Doug McDermott had like 14 points in the first four minutes of the ball game. Yep. I mean, everybody, I mean, Brissett was 10 or 14. I mean, four or six, six or 10, eight yep. or 12, three or six. Four. I mean, no. You can't let somebody shoot 55% and think you're going to win a playoff game. Okay. Here's my only issue with the Ball brothers. Again, I'm a Lonzo fan. The, the younger brother's the most fun to watch. Right. But when they lose games, they don't show me losing. You know, they, they don't seem to take it very hard right. at all. And last night, LaMelo just seemed in his own world, happy-go-lucky, just, eh, whatever, right. sun's going to come up. I don't think he lost any sleep, and, and it always struck me that Lonzo never looked like he lost any sleep mm -hmm. over a poor performance or a big L. Right. So I, I don't know why that is. I don't know if they were spoiled coming up the mm -hmm. AAU ranks, but they don't take losing very hard. You took losing horribly yeah. hard. And we just talked to Tim Grover. Trust me, Jordan and Kobe, they took losing oh, yeah. like powerfully hard. <laughs> they, they were obsessed with not losing. And right. I just don't know if either the, the Ball brothers have that that quality in them yet. I, I think, you know, that's that's going to come. I think the better, the more, the more expectation. There's not an ex, a lot of expectations. I mean, he's expected to play well, but now he's going to he become the face of a franchise. And the expectation level is, Skip, is forget these play-ins. You need to have a spot in the playoffs, and you need to lead us past the first round. So with the expectations, and, and Lonzo, I think Lonzo just needs to get somewhere where they believe in him. And he's not the source of trade talks yeah. every single year. It's hard for him to care, Skip, because, hell, y'all don't care about me. Because every time somebody want to trade, y'all throw me in the hat. So why I care about when y'all don't care about me? And I think that that will change. But this was I, – I, I did not see this last. I did not see this. I was mm. like, okay, it's going to be a good little game. And I'm like, mm. you give up 69 points? And the hell, you give up 70-plus in the second half, Skip? Mm. I mean, they mm. gave what they gave. They gave up 40, 29, 39, and 36. Mm. And you're going to be who with that? <laughs> I nope. want that the most points in a playoff game since when? Like, I think they said 94? Yep. I can't remember last time I saw 140 points in the playoff game. No mercy.
the Lakers face off against the Warriors in tonight's play-in tournament. LeBron and Steph Curry have faced each other in 22 NBA Finals games, but this will be their first matchup in the Western Conference. So, Shannon, who scores more tonight, LeBron or Steph? You know, I... I believe Steph might have have a couple of more points than LeBron, no. but I, I'm expecting a big night from AD mm -hmm. because he has the decided advantage of that big, uh, that small front line. Mm -hmm. Draymond, Looney, who are they, who they going to put on him? Uh, uh, Toscano Anderson. So I expect AD to be the high point man for the Lakers tonight. Mm -hmm. But I think LeBron will have something probably like 26, 8, 9. Mm. And Steph's going to have 30? I give him 27, 28. 27, 28. I don't. I believe that Miss Trip Dub left Russ in the dust in Boston <laughs> last night. She's going to visit Staples tonight. I got LeBron 25, 10, and 12. And Steph's going to have a long night. I'll give him 23, 3, and 10 because they will basically staple him to the floor at Staples with double and triple teams. It's going to be a long, hard So he's going to have 10 assists, so they're going to make him a passer instead yeah, of a score. That's correct, but he's going to go 2 of 14 from 3. Well, right I hope you're right. I hope you're right. I will be right, but as that's usual. Okay. But that's okay. But I'm just expecting it. I just want a clean game. Mm. I just want LeBron <laughs> and AD to come out healthy. Mm. You know, we're going to celebrate because I'm probably going to go down there to the game tonight. So, you are know. You? you are. I might. Oh, I might. good. You're going <laughs> to go down I'll to the game, celebrate. Bright and early tomorrow. <laughs> All night. Come to the show. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we will, of course, react to the Lakers Warriors tomorrow morning. We're back at the same time. The Herd is on now. Have a great day.